Hi hey guys, welcome back. This is Matchette, episode 519, featuring a game that I really think you're going to love. Namely, War Tales. Now this game uh, had an expansion come out not too long ago uh, that adds a seafaring element to it. Uh, but I think even in its original form, it's well worth checking out. It's by Shiro Games uh, from France, uh, if I do believe. And it is on GOG. Uh, for $35 or thereabouts in Steam uh, for the same price. Or you can get the Pirates Edition, which includes this expansion that I'll be showing you uh, later in this episode, uh, for right around $50. Bucks. Uh, but I really don't think you can go wrong with this. It's great times. I had a lot, a lot of fun with it. Over 100 hours and still <laughs> quite addicted. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, without further ado, here it's War Tales. All right, let's get into this one, man. This is a good game. <laughs> oh, I've had some good times with this. War Tales by Shiro Games. A little bit loud in the old ear set here. <laughs> ear set. <laughs> okay, uh, so as usual, what I want to do is uh, I start off with a new party, a new campaign, show you a little bit about a little bit of the starting game, and then we'll zip to my later save, which is way past all of this. Uh, but I think one of the brilliant things about this game is that it doesn't, at least in my experience, uh, uh, get boring as you go along. You know, there's always something new that's happening, some new abilities, some new uh, skills, uh, some new camp tools. I mean, it's just one thing after another that just keeps you engaged. And it's not one of those games where, you know, the mid-game or the initial part is boring, uh, but the mid-game is good, and the in-game is boring. No. Now, all of the different phases are all lots of fun, so I really have to commend them for that. Uh, and this one is the expansion with the Pirates of Bellerion. Bellerion. You know, I haven't really played around with that expansion, so maybe when we go to the later game I'll show you some of that. Uh, little Pirates themed. Arrgh. Okay, but anyway, we're starting off here with the new Pate. Choose your destiny. What was it? Was it Ultima? Which Ultima was it that had the fortune teller? Is that? Was that three or four? I blank on that. But anyway, this is kind of reminds me of. Uh, your companions are. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. You know, the, the problem with summoning these games, they can't help it. You know, but you know, when you haven't played it before, you have no idea. Like, well, which one of these is better? Uh, so you probably want to go more just with role playing. Uh, what well, sounds like more fun from a storytelling perspective. Uh, but now that I've been through it, I can see that I probably don't want this because raw materials are huge. There's massive weapon uh, and armor degradation in this game. Which, the raw materials are one thing that can <laughs> make or break you, so that's probably not a good thing. Uh, suspicion is actually more uh, easy to deal with. That fades away over time, especially with the the guards want to cost you or not. Trouble with the police! Starts with bread plus 10, happiness minus 2. Uh, this, is the young, this is what I went with before, young farmers looking for a better life. And I always thought that was a great story uh, device. Uh, let's see, bandits looking to escape the guy. Oh, so they start off with some stolen items. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see, what do we want? Uh, so they got, they got a swordsman, ranger, archer, a brute. Uh, one of these doesn't have an archer in it. That's probably not good. Medicine is important too for healing up your party. Yeah, it's it's gonna be, you know, no perfect choice here. 
Okay, maybe this first one that looks, even though it just said I don't like the idea of not having raw materials, it looks like a pretty good mix of starting companions. So I'll just go with this. Okay, your companions are uh, used to long walks. Reduces the speed at which... Ooh, that's a, that's a nice bonus. Yeah, troops fatigue, huge thing. For cutting fighters. Experience gained in combat increased. Influence gained after battle. You know, you're, in my experience, your party levels up pretty quick. So that's probably not as great as it sounds. But again, one thing I'd, I'd never like to do is cap out my characters too early. <laughs> and you remember or two. Uh, constitution is good because this will affect all of the uh, your ability to carry items as we'll see it's kind of weird constitution is hit points but it's also how much loot your guys can carry and if you're anything like me having to leave stuff on the ground is tragic critical damage that's a pretty good one uh, quick learners experience gain for each profession increased by 10 percent so all of these are pretty solid choices I would think but I think this first one is probably the best because uh, the, you don't want to have to keep camping out all the time it's actually kind of fun to camp but you know it, it's kind of a pain when you're trying to get somewhere and you keep having to stop and camp you wish you had just that little bit of extra gusto if they had a flaw it would be a somewhat meek appearance each companion's carry capacity oh definitely it's all of that Reduces troops happiness. Oh, that sucks. But you know, it's pretty easy to get your happiness way up. So that might actually be okay. Oh. You know, the willpower is probably the weakest attribute in this game, at least in my experience. It does determine, it has something to do with critical hit or damage I've never quite worked out. Uh, there's a couple of sequences where you need characters with high willpower to be able to do it. There's Haunted Village. Uh, so that might come back to haunt you. <laughs> uh, but uh, the only real value I think it has is if you get it up to 15, it lets you uh, keep going even if your hit points drop below zero. Uh, so just being reduced by one is not that big of a deal. Uh, I think I'll probably go with that one. Uh, let's see, adaptive exploration. And again, I should always caution you guys. As somebody who's played the game, I'm a fan of the game. I'm not a scientist, a min-maxer. I'm not a guy with uh, spreadsheets kicking around here trying to figure out exactly the right strategy. Uh, but I know this this will work. So, uh, And I'm proclaiming myself a War Tales master. <laughs> You're somebody that likes the game. Uh, Alright, adaptive exploration. Let's see, what is this? The game will always offer a challenge suited to your troop. Oh, no. Now, I much prefer the region locked exploration. Uh, so you got to get your guys up to a certain level, and then you can go to the next zone. And some zones will kill you <laughs> if you're not ready for it. You know, I much prefer that. One thing I hate about modern role playing games is this idea that uh, you never get to a point <clears throat> where you're just kicking ass. You know, they always try to make it so that uh, even that humble little rat is still giving your party a real run for its money. No, 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 no. I want to get, get awesome. Go back to those starting zones and just, you know, dominate. <laughs> that's, that's fine. It's fun. Okay, then we got our starting zone. I thought, uh, I thought Tiltron County was where everybody started, but I guess you could choose which one you want. Okay. I'll just go with Tiltron. I don't see any reason not to. You know, one mistake I made in my first playthrough was I went to the wrong sort of got these uh, in the wrong order and I missed out on some valuable camping tools uh, mainly the ability to tan hides uh, so I didn't get that until like very late in the game and it would have been really nice to have early uh, so I think you do kind of want to follow the trajectory of easy zone slightly harder zone not to try to skip over a zone okay then we've got various difficulty sliders you probably don't want an expert I think he sounds like the default you will need to manage your companion's hunger. Um, no, I think experience probably is about right. <laughs> you know, I always wonder, like, yes, I want more pain! <laughs> no. <laughs> I want a, a challenge, but not something that's just going to be frustrating and have me. 
uh, cursing at the screen. Uh, let's see, probably just go free. I like being able to save wherever. Although, truly, truth be told, in a game like this, there is something to be said for an Iron Man mode, because it would force you to constantly be recruiting and working on new uh, mercenaries, rather than just trying to keep your party alive the whole time. You now, while I'm uh, pouring my coffee here, too, in lieu of a Matt Chadell, I have a Irish whiskey and vanilla infused coffee by Don Pablo. Whole bean. I'll be sampling this today. It doesn't actually have alcohol in it. I think it might have a trace amount. I always had to say that, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> you know, some people have religious or dietary concerns about that, but I think it's just the flavor. What does it say? I thought it said somewhere, but no, uh, usually they'll tell you something about alcohol content. I don't see anything on here, but it seems like I read. What do they do here? Uh, coffee beans soaked in fine Irish whiskey and vanilla. But then I assume that the roasting process would burn away all the alcohol content. Yeah, it says contains less than 0.5% alcohol. Okay. So there's our little starting party. I guess we could rename these guys. You know, one of the things that's really fun about this game, and at first I didn't know, quite know what to think about it, but you're basically selecting people based on the weapon. Uh, so, like, the ranger or the archer guy here, is, there's no point where he's going to be able to switch to a, a knife or sword. The same thing with all these characters. And, and you probably want a nice mix, uh, one of everything, I think is the most fun, because they all have unique abilities. Is there anything else I could change here? I guess I could play around with uh, their traits and stuff, but I'll just leave it random. Alright, so we got Nordhall, Archer, Lambus, Ranger, Astius, and uh, what is he? Brute. Yeah, so they're like maces. Really good characters. Good for tanking. And Swordsman, also good for tanking or damage. Alright, let's go ahead and start her up. You know, in this game, I was, I was trying to think of all the games this reminded me of, or kind of strikes the same chord as. We've got a little bit of uh, games like uh, Mountain Blade, maybe a bit of uh, Jagged Alliance, uh, Rexcom, uh, Recruiting. Uh, there's just a lot of different elements. A lot of WoW, I feel. I actually like their mini games for fishing and, and mining and stuff a lot more than I do WoW. <laughs> in World of Warcraft really needs to update, I think, some of their... Uh, Little crafting games. Let's see. Your companions are off in search of adventure. After a few days of quietly traveling, traveling along, they got lost. It's a novel and exciting quest to stir up the uneventful lives of bored apprentices. So they got this a story. I don't think a good reason to play this is oh, I want a really awesome storyline. You know, this is a game where you. It's kind of about your story. You know, this is your your tale. <laughs> Uh, which I love that. I don't like really heavy-handed narration. Sometimes it's okay, uh, but sometimes I just like a game that'll just shut up and let me play it. <laughs> I'm just taking a look here at my characters. Uh, so there's a lot. I could stop here and, and hash out everything for you right off the bat, but I think we'll just keep going. I'll explain along the way what's important. Uh, but there is a bit of a, you know, if you're used to Dungeons and Dragons, uh, fifth edition, uh, that's probably what this is closest to, I feel like. You know, like the dexterity, for example, is, is what you want on, on your ranged troops. Uh, but it's not going to have as much value for uh, uh, your fighters, right? You want to get their strength up. Uh, Constitution, we covered that already. Uh, one thing about it, uh, there's not a lot of... There are some skills later on where you can dodge things, but it's really, I don't think, connected to dexterity. I said, I don't think you're going to try to get your dodge up. <laughs> There's not a lot of dodging. <laughs> uh, so that's dexterity is just for those uh, certain types of weapons. Like this this bow here has a dexterity thing that controls its damage. See there? It says shoot. Deals 4 to 7 damage to the target. 9 meter shot. And then dexterity is there in parentheses. So if you want to get that damage up, you have to raise dexterity. And willpower. Yeah, it says there also increases the critical hit. This is about morale, too. I forgot. <laughs> I don't forget that mechanic. <laughs> well, you know, you really taste the Irish whiskey in this. 
You know, if I didn't know better, I think I'd just poured like a shot of, uh, what is it, Jameson <laughs> uh, in there. That's good stuff. Uh, okay, yeah, if you get it up to 15 points, uh, then you get a uh, survive the first time you should die in combat. Basically, we'll save you a reload, if you're anything like me. Uh, critical hits. You know, this is different, of course, than 5th uh, edition. We're not rolling a D20, you know, if only you get a critical hit if you roll 20. Uh, here it's a percentage, as it should be. And it's worthwhile getting it up. And that makes a big difference. Movement. Uh, this is confusing to some people I was reading online. They thought movement had to do with movement around the map. No. It's just in combat only. And so be Not to say it's useless for that reason. Actually quite valuable, but uh, just to keep it in mind. And then we got our wages here. So we're going to have to be bringing in money to pay these guys. And I think they have different amounts that they asked for. Yeah, see, there's one that only wants 13. Because uh, he's got a trade here. <laughs> Volunteer. <laughs> Wages reduced by 10%. And then we have ponies. Yes, I love the pony. Why can't you have horses for your people to ride on? I don't know. It's stupid. <laughs> Why don't they let you ride the ponies? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, at least they can carry your stuff for you. And they hook you up with a saddle bag. And again, all you want to put on this... Uh, you can't have ponies in combat. But if it's just a pack animal. As far as I can tell, the only thing you want to raise with these guys is their uh, constitution. Because this alone can obviously. Okay, and I think that's about all we really need to get started here. So let's take a look at our map. Rumor has it that a Balerian ship is washed up on the southern coast of Tiltra. Well, that's because they have the expansion installed. Uh, so pretty standard, you know, you just click around to move. Now you'll notice there's a little uh, sparkly item, which reminds me a lot of a game called Heroes of Might and Magic. Wonderful stuff. If I click on that, it'll go and pick it up, and we can see it's two uh, Comfries, and that's good for alchemy. Which I don't think we've picked up any of those skills yet. Actually, we could look to see what our guys have. Uh, so they don't have a profession yet. Yeah, I guess they start you off without any professions. Don't really need to worry about that right off, but it's a nice system. You get various perks as well. Oh, those bandits are coming for me. Are they going to get me? Ha <laughs> ha, they got me. All right, we got some hoodlums in the pooch. It is quite possible to wipe on even the first battle. We'll see how it goes. All right. Now it does adjust. If I have a big whomping army, it'll add more enemies to the mix. So it does kind of scale that way. And some people try to play it with just the minimum minimum crew, but I think that kind of you kind of miss out again on some of those other abilities that the players have. Now you always get to position your guys wherever you want them starting off. So that's pretty big. Uh, advantage if you can implement a little strategy. So I probably uh, this guy's an archer. So just about anybody could take him out. I feel I might move my archer like there. Now there is a friendly fire is a big deal, and flanking is also another tactic. Okay, then I get to pick who I want to go first. So I got the swordsman there. The uh, I think this is my uh, brute. We've got our backstabber. And maybe I can move my backstabber guy a little closer so he can get that backstab in. We'll try this. Alright, so when I move him into position, I can use the number key, number pad here to do this uh, slice. Strength based attack. Alright, yes, he's engaged now. A little strategy, I could explain that to you. So if you look closely there, you see he's got these on the ground tile. He's got a little uh, arrow pointing uh, towards the enemy that he's engaged with, and then the uh, hoodlum is engaged. So th these guys are going to get married. <laughs> no, no. Uh, what it means is that now they're kind of locked, and he'll have to use. He'll either have to run away, provoking an attack of opportunity uh, from the person that they're engaged with, uh, but he'll probably more likely just stay there attacking. So what this lets me do is move my backstabber guy into position. Oh, I think I need to end the turn there. Yeah. 
Yeah, up here I can see who's going to go next. This is also very valuable. If you click around here, you'll see which enemies get to go in what order. Uh, so sometimes uh, you want to just focus on, like, who's going to get the first turn, kill them before they get to move, you know, move on down the line. Uh, I have finished a lot of battles this way before, you know, the enemy even gets to lay a hand on me. You know, I'm not actually sure how this turn order is. Uh, if this is just random or if there's things that let you go sooner. I'm not sure on that one. Okay, but I can make any... I don't have to go with that guy they selected. I can pick anyone I want. So I'm going to move him in and we'll try to backstab. Now, uh, they call ambush uh, a backstab. So if I'm behind somebody that's engaged, as I am here, then I get an increased critical hit chance of 30%. So he'll hopefully land a crit. And he did. <laughs> Didn't do all that much damage, but... Uh, more than otherwise. Okay, and then I can, since he's not engaged, I, I could move him back or move him around or whatever. And uh, we'll just, uh, I'll leave him there, I think. He gets to attack, he did five points. Of, oh, and here we go, already with a frickin' poison. <laughs> I hate this mechanic. It's one of the worst mechanics I've seen in games. Uh, there's poison and bleeding and a bunch of other ones. And, and the annoying part about it is, Instead of uh, taking a certain amount of hit points every time, it's actually a percentage. So this is 5% of health at the end of my next turn, and it stacks. So you get attacked, you could have a... Uh, the problem with it is you can get attacked by a bunch of little piddly crap. Uh, but they got these poison stacks on you. They can take down your most powerful tank uh, just by sticking a bunch of poison on you. Uh, now there are ways you can cure it. But uh, there's ways to prevent it later on, but it's just a, a real pain. You know, I hate it when you're in a protracted battle and everything's going well, but then you have to reload because one guy got hit with poison and just won't stop, uh, you know, taking damage. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get my other guy. See, this is where more movement would come in handy because he can't quite reach that archer. And then this is my archer. Now, he's probably not... You can see his range there. Now see, if I try to hit this guy, there's a 41% chance I'm going to hit my own dude. And not only will that do damage, but it could taint their relationship. Because apparently people don't like it when somebody hits them with an arrow, even by accident. Now, who would have thunk that? So I could either move him up uh, where he gets a better angle on that dude. Or I could just uh, try to beeline it for that uh, other archer. So I'm not going to take this shot because I'm going to hit my own guy. But if I use this aim skill, uh, then it will let me... Uh... Well, it says precision is enhanced, but basically this will eliminate that friendly fire possibility. But it will use up one of my Valor points. Uh, so these are basically your superpowers, and you get a couple of them from resting. Uh, but you get other ones during the battle, depending on certain skills and items, you could uh, get more. But you probably don't want to waste them, because uh, especially these sort of bronze color ones, once, you, once they're gone, you don't get them back until you rest again. So I might just take it easy with that. <laughs> I'll probably kill this guy next turn anyway. Uh, uh, and then we have the morale meter up here. So you can see, if I can get it a little bit higher, then they get galvanized. So that'll boost my damage. Now if I can get it to a certain point, the uh, some of the the rest of the uh, attackers will retreat or surrender. Uh, I don't typically use that because I like to capture them <laughs> or just kill them for their loot. But that's an option. You don't always. Sometimes the battle just going on forever. You got a lot of poisoned and stuff going on. You just want to get out of the battle. Okay, so again, I think I will use my back steps, see if I can kill this guy. There we go. Ha-ha! <laughs> I guess that was the gal. Alright. Now, she's dead. I can, uh... Yeah, he's uh, in lighter armor, so he can move a little further, I believe. Notice, too, he's got first aid. And one of the things that this does... Uh, it does restore some health, but the main thing is it will get rid of poison and bleeding and burning. But again, it uses one of those points. Alright, let's see. Is he close enough now? Yes, he can engage! You might notice that there's uh, these bars on top of them. So you got armor, 
and then you got the health. And so you have to take away the armor typically, again sometimes there's certain skills that will bypass armor, but uh, typically what you're doing is getting rid of the armor first and then the health. And then they've got this thing called guard. Let's see if i got somebody here with guard. Uh, it's, he should have some guard. Yeah. Uh, so if you have a shield or heavier armor, or the shield I guess, gives you the plus nine guard. And so what this does is reduce damage as long as you have armor. Uh, so if you have a, a shield and you got some armor, it doesn't work, I guess, once the armor's gone, but it will reduce the damage by 9%. Which is kind of useful to know. You'll find some things that have guard on it. You're like, what the heck is that? So he's moved. And I can see if I can get this archer into position. You, I don't know if you can tell. Sometimes it's kind of weird trying to move around. Okay, and again, I'm gonna hit. I got a 90% chance to hit my dude if I strike there, so I'm gonna just let him relax. Now, unfortunately, he's gonna take a hit uh, from poison, point, but it came out of his health instead of his armor. Which is another problem with that mechanic that I hate is even if you had the best armor, uh, you're still going down for poison, and it ain't no. Fun. Let's see if I can get. Oh, look at this! Haha, <laughs> I got my. Rogue back into position. Okay, he didn't get a crit, but we got him low. This ought to finish him off. Now, if I had a chain, I could try to capture these, some of these outlaws and turn them in for a, uh, a reward. Well, we don't have that. Now, we got some junk here. You can't take the corpses, and there is an option to eat the corpses, even of humans. Cannibalism, I haven't played around with that. And so I'll just take uh, uh, the items. Uh, you can also uh, get this thing called a spike in your camp and put a corpse on the spike to boost morale. But again, not really something that appeals to my role-playing sensibilities. All right, and then we got uh, one of our guys has leveled up already. Uh, the swordsman. I can right-click on him. Uh, so this Wrath is kind of an ability you can use if, if an enemy has a little bit of health and you just want to finish them off. Uh, you can use one of your Valor points for that. Now let's go ahead and open up this Aptitude points. Okay, uh, I got a lot to cover here. Uh, so, yes, you have uh, these specializations within a class or weapon type. So if you want to wield a sword, uh, you go for a Protector, Fighter, and Swordmaster. And then later on as you play, you'll get more specializations that will open up to you. So you could either recruit a new character or respect one, uh, if you like. Now, if you look at the options here, you're basically getting a special ability, and it determines what kind of uh, uh, armor you can wear. So if you want a tank, you definitely should go with heavy. <laughs> now, that will make a huge difference. Uh, but the abilities are different. Like this one, encouragement. Unit and all allies in the area uh, gain protection for two rounds. That's an eight meter area. Let's see, we can, I think protection. Yeah, damage taken reduced by 30%. So that's fairly useful. It's something you can do like your first move. You got all your guys grouped together. One Valor point, you get 30% uh, damage reduction for two rounds, which that's typically the length of a battle. So very useful. Plus he wears heavy armor and then he gets plus two to his constitution. Uh, which, again, that's for hit points and carrying capacity. Uh, now, I really like this one, though. Destabilizing Strike. I had this on my other game. Uh, so this will uh, reduce their guard. So if it's a heavily armored opponent, you can destabilize them first uh, and then attack, and you'll uh, bypass that damage reduction. It's actually killed a lot of enemies just with that. Uh, so I'm really thinking about this one. Uh, or I could go for a damage uh Instead of being a tank, you know, just have a damager, <coughs> DPS guy. Uh, medium helmet, medium armor, but you get a point of strength. And then this laceration ability uh, deals five damage to all units in the area. So it's an area attack. It's kind of usually kind of tough to pull these off. You have to be positioned just right. And it, plus it uses two valor points. But, you know, I think I might go... Uh, with this fighter one. I just I like that destabilizing strike so much. On the other hand, encouragement. <laughs> Heck, you know, I don't think I used a protector before, so we'll just make this guy my tank. 
Yes, Reinhard. Reinhard. I like to try different things as I play again, you know. So I haven't really tinkered with this, so we'll go with that. Now I can uh, upgrade some attributes. And you notice some of these have two little golden pluses on them, which means I'll get double my value. Uh, or uh, just the one. Now later on, uh, you'll hear me say that a lot, <laughs> you'll be able to, uh, to pick a little better. you have more flexibility here. Uh, but I think two is better than one in most cases. So I'm just going to buff off his uh, constitution. Plus this brings him to 15 so that if he does go down, he'll get that extra chance. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I already got a level two just from the first battle. Also got 41 XP and then the influence, which you can do all sorts of fun things with. Okay, and then I got some items. Let's go ahead and look at these items. A damaged dagger. So we've only got one guy that can use a dagger. Lambus. Hey. <laughs> Let's see if this is better than a rusty shiv. Okay. So, yeah, we just hover over it like this, and you can see it gives him a point of dex and ability called poison. But he loses something called stabby skill. Stab deals 6 to 7 damage to the target. Plus it has that ambush bonus. So it's more of a backstabber's weapon. Whereas this will apply a poison. Which you've already seen what that does. Deals 6 to 7 damage to the target and applies one poison. Uh, so pretty compelling option. I, I think I'm just going to stick with my... Rusty Shiv for the moment, though, because I do love doing those ambushes so much. But I'll hold on to that dagger, of course, because I can sell it. Let's uh, move ahead. Now, your guys kind of move slow unless you hold the shift key down. Actually, I don't think I have that ability yet. <laughs> it is possible to run after short little bursts. We'll try to get that one as soon as possible. That's what this uh, knowledge is about. Okay. I think if you hold the Alt key down, you can see what you can uh, click on. Sometimes there's little resources hidden in these scenes. Like there'd be a little chest you can pick open or some hemp. When I think of how many people don't shoe their ponies, it makes me want to pull out the little head I have left. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Buy a horse from us. And I'll throw in the horseshoes for free. Uh, so you can see I'm already... I don't have that many items, and I'm not too far away from my maximum carrying capacity. So you might want to buy another pony. And then you can put the horseshoe on the pony, and that will speed up your movement. Which again, pretty cool ability. You might want a horseshoe instead of a saddlebag. I'm just going to leave it as Although is. the war in has been a boon for my business... I cannot help but feel for my poor ponies. I can tell you aren't soldiers. Take them with you if you can. Otherwise, they would most likely tell. end up dead on the battlefield through no fault of their own. Yeah, poor pony, so you could buy one. Yeah, it's 180, so I'd take like all my gold. Probably come back later. When it's ready ready for another horse. Now here we could steal some wheat. So you can just show you what this looks like. We go to steel. I don't have a, a thief yet. Oops. Uh, but that would uh, basically let you steal this. And then this little bar here, suspicion meter, would pop up a certain amount. As long as it's under uh, the wanted level, I guess. That's no big deal. It'll fade away in time. Uh, but again, not something that I like to do too much of. I'm not a... Uh, it just hasn't... You know, I don't like the idea of playing a, a bunch of brigands. <laughs> so I just leave people's this? stuff alone. We have nothing. We are only refugees fleeing the Ederanian war. Please let us go. So here we could be you. jerks and attack these refugees, I guess. Or you could give them some bread. And we do have four days worth of food, so it probably wouldn't hurt us too much. And then we'd get the 15 influence, which might uh, be more useful at this point than the bread. But you know, we'll just leave it for now. Okay. Now, see, we already have a quest. If buy a pony to be eligible for the special offer. And so the map here will keep track of this for us. Uh, and then we also have this purple stuff. 
uh, read each region. Remember, I was showing you those regions before. Uh, will have its own sort of story arc. There'll be choices you can make along the way. We haven't really started that yet, though. Uh, but that's something to keep an eye on. Yeah, I'm just like compulsively hitting that shift key. All right, now we've already got. Uh, you know, just like with WoW, as you explore areas, open up the map, you get these knowledge points. And this is a lot of fun. So again, we don't have our professions picked out yet. But I could uh, pick one right away. Uh, run, which I think I'll do. <laughs> and so this will really speed up our ability to get around the map. So I'm going to go ahead and learn that one right away. So now I can hold the shift key down to get that little little bar. You don't want it to run out, but that will speed things up. Right, and then we're here in town. You can see you've got an apothecary, a market, town hall, a forge, and an inn. Let's try the town hall first. Let's see what we can get a quest or something going here. Are you mercenaries? I'll have you know that we do not take kindly to refugees in these parts. Don't take kindly to Why? refugees. You ask? Because they have overrun our streets and are now taking to the roads. Erdogan is sending our way anything with legs so and there's a that mouth story I was that telling cannot you about. wield a sword. So you can decide whether you want to side with the refugees or with the town. You have your work cut out for you. Uh, one thing there I don't no particularly like about the game is I think they got a little carried help. away with the gray area. This yeah, seems to be the big thing. Like, yes, everything has to be a moral gray area. No real clear good guys and bad guys. You know, so they, basically what that amounts to is you never feel real good about any choices you make. You know, just the lesser of two evils or whatever. I guess that's the symptom of good writing these days in games. I don't care for it personally. I like it. I'd like a more clearly defined uh, good guys and bad guys <laughs> set of options. <laughs> Maybe I'm just simplistic. I don't know. Uh, okay, I don't see anything else I can do in this room. Sometimes you can open up a chest or something. Uh, let's see, what do I want to do next? So many options. Uh, why don't we look at the apothecary? Wait, there should be some. My concoctions can heal the most grievous injuries. So you could buy your be medicine. Sure this is what'll heal you up after a battle. Using them. But you really want to start making things yourself. Oh, and then you need always need to get all these recipes, but kind of low on cash. I just remember what they are for now. Uh, but these oils are basically things that you put on your weapons. You can put two on a weapon. Uh, they're permanent, uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, the, you know, reapplying it. <laughs> uh, however, the resources can be kind of scarce. Uh, we'll get into those. So you, you probably wouldn't want to put a really nice oil on a crappy weapon just about to replace. And here's where we can craft our potions. So what you want to do is figure out uh, who do you want to do what. There's a bunch, a bunch of professions, and you're going to need uh, probably one of each. And so if we click on our guys, we can see what the advantage would be. Actually, I guess I can't even uh, access some of these yet. But the if I if I become a uh, tinkerer which is something you can do in the camp. I get a critical hit bonus. And this will scale as I level up the Tinkerer. And so when we get to Tinker or Master level, it'll probably be a critical hit of 10% or something. Same thing with Thief. My Alchemist. So these are all give two of these give me a dexterity bonus, which is which is solid. You know, you just think, who would it make sense to have a, uh, that bonus on? Like if I put it on my protector. You know, he doesn't really need dexterity, so that wouldn't make a lot of sense. So let's just go with the, uh, the ranger. It kind of makes sense to me that a ranger would have uh, uh, alchemy skills. Then again, the rangers are about as close as you can get to a, just a pure thief. <laughs> so I might want to go thief instead with him. Uh, so let's get the archer. Who's an archer? Yeah, we'll make the archer the alchemist. Okay, that's all there is to that. You see, we got to get 20 points to level up. The only place that uh, Nordhall can do the alchemy is here at this crafting table. 
And I don't think we can make anything because we don't have any vials or snow irises. So we don't really have enough uh, materials yet to make anything. But let's go ahead and go ahead and pick that. You know, while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and make our ranger the thief of the party. And we can worry about the tinkerer later. Uh, then we also have a blacksmith. And uh, thank God, I, I love the way this game, the stuff that you make is better than the stuff you can find, generally. And she, thank you. I I never understood why there's all these games like, oh, wow, where the only stuff you can make is crap. <laughs> and it doesn't even pay to make it and sell it. You know, in this game, uh, it's really great. You know, you make good stuff, you can sell it, make a lot of money. Uh, or, you know, it's the best stuff you can put on your guys. <clears throat> so, I think they did a much better job here. You can use my anvil. I can also repair your arm. You know, while I'm at it. This is all you need in a town, right? I don't need to be able to a 3D exploration of a blacksmith shop. <laughs> you just give me a screen like this, Might and Magic style. It's fun, nice interface. Uh, there, I never seem to have enough raw materials, you know, so this is something I might invest in. Uh, coal, I'm going to need to make anything here in the uh, blacksmith shop. Let's take a look. Uh, so I'm going to need a blacksmith. Probably makes sense for one of my fighter guys to have that. Let's just go ahead. I don't think it actually hurts you to change later. You might just lose a couple of points. Uh, but again, I don't have uh, enough materials to make anything. But we'll take care of that soon enough. And let's see. Does he have any recipes? You can use my anvil. Well, sometimes they I have recipes, but he does not. You know what I can do is sell you this can dagger. Use my anvil. I can also repair your armor. I oh, can sell this trinket. And I'm looking to hire a skilled black... <laughs> Oh, so he needs a skilled blacksmith. I forgot about that. Uh, we can see what the details are. Find a blacksmith and bring him here. I wonder if you could uh, capture one. And, you know, some, sometimes you capture enemies and they already have some, uh, some skills. So that's something to think about. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the market. Come, come. Take a look There's at my a lot ways. to this. I mean, oh, so much of this game is so well thought out. Like, one way to play this would be Elite style, or like a trading commerce kind of game. You buy up these uh, trade goods, float them up onto your ponies, go to another town, sell them for a profit, buy stuff there, go to the next town. <clears throat> you know, there are a lot of players that, you know, that's how they play this game. You'll be fighting lots of bandits and stuff along the way. Uh, so that's a legitimate way to play. And it even takes notes for you. you know, if you buy this, it'll note how much you paid for it and when you bought it. So that when you get to another vendor, uh, you can easily compare uh, and see if you're making a profit or not. The uh, green stuff means it's at a discount. So I guess this is just kind of random. I, I don't know. But I could buy this leather. It's normally... It says the price temporarily reduced. So I guess it was 5 now it's four. Am I reading that right? I can't tell if that means that it was normally nine and now it's four, or is it just was five and <laughs> not four. But either way, it's a pretty good deal on leather. I'll just make note of it for now. Uh, barber kits, they're not clear about that, but it just, when you get to camp, you can change the look of your characters with that. Those Cosmetic. Refugees. I understand there's a war in Edoran, but that doesn't mean they can just help themselves. Oh, nice mustache on this guy. Uh, guess what? <laughs> it's just like it. Oh, what game was that? Was it? I forget which one. It was. I think it's the Elder Scrolls games where, man, you just you never have enough salt. <laughs> uh, same thing here. You know, cooking anything requires salt. Uh, so you, you probably do want to invest in a little bit of salt. I don't want to go crazy here. Uh, and then the, all, all the raw meat, of course, you'll be able to cook. But I know you're going to need salt no matter what, so I'm going to go ahead and buy some of that. You touch it, you buy it. And let's see. Some of the recipes for will require apples and cabbage. Seems to be popular. If I have some wheat, I can make some bread. So let's go ahead and buy a little bit, a little bit of that. Just so I have a, something I can cook. All right. But I think there was, was there another dude hanging out? Yeah, look at this. 
For a few crowns, I can polish your armor. Please. I, I'm so hungry. I guess we can give this guy some money. Don't get anything in return, looks go. like. <laughs> a little spit and polish here and there. Done. Thank you for all the money. It will be... Oh, he stole 20 and took off. Oh, look at that. Unless in their kids, is never be nice to people. Just... Please, can you spare some food? Oh, Lord. What? Okay, yes, Thank food, you so I much. I will pray for you. Well, at least we got some influence. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm not going to reload just because of that. And then we have the end. Lots of fun stuff we can do in the inns. We can hire some new people. Uh, the informants will be in every Stop. town. You. Yeah, you. You looking? I can give you tips and point you toward the best missions. The kind that pays much better than the measly rewards the mercenary guild has to offer. This is a little course, bit ambiguous here. But basically what this guy does. In other people's affairs. Uh, they give you leads on where you day, need to go for the story the quests. Of crowns in your purse and you'll notice they off, don't take right? crowns. They take uh, the influence. And you probably do. I don't know if you necessarily have to buy these. Uh, but they'll light up on the map. Let's go ahead just... I thought you might be interested. Yeah, so they show you Anything where to go on the map so you can get to that story quest. I don't have enough influence right now to get more. We have a so, bartender. It's not often you see new faces around here. Well, a couple of good recipes, but I don't have enough. I don't want to spend is. all my money on this right away. This is where you get your alcohol. Feel free to come back often. Well, there's always folk looking for work around here. Especially since the fighting some, started across the board. Valor points. And he could sing. I don't have a, a loot yet. Once I get a bard going, we can. This is a fun, really fun little guitar hero style uh, Our role as emissaries is music. to ensure that all service requests are fulfilled. We regularly update. Okay. This is where we can get some quests. This is where you'll probably make most of your money. Okay, let's just. Grab some of these amateur hunters. Yeah, Ooh, the rat infestation. Yeah. The Doom of the Ancients is really awesome. That's basically a little mini adventure game they built into this. All right, now we can also see if we can hire somebody. Don't be fooled by these rugs. Before becoming a refugee, I used to be a. Ooh, I don't have enough influence yet to buy any new people. I want to see the world. You can get a spearman. These are awesome. Definitely want to come back and get a spearman at some point. Now, they are really good with the tax of opportunity. Don't be fooled by these rock. This is another. A warrior uses an axe. It's really useful to have all of those. Plus, you can uh, divvy out the uh, professions. You can also use prisoners to do your. Uh, your. Uh, trades and if you have the really prisoners long enough they'll actually join your party or try to escape and have to recapture okay I think I've done about everything I can do at the moment <clears throat> now these uh, guys walking around here are merchants oh, he disappeared uh, but they'll have little items you know you can buy and sell from them or I guess attack them if you want to be a brigand all right why don't we head over? I want to jump right to the rats, but I think I get killed. Why don't we try to do this little easy quest? Yeah, there's some kind of hunts quest there. Oops. Watch. Let's go this way. Of course, keeping our eyes peeled for resources along the way. I'll just show you what this does. Might I interest you in my humble wares, my good sirs? A <laughs> rat. <laughs> uh, yeah, 50 to 60 on that wanted bar. Uh, so I don't think we want to do that. Till tree number meal. Uh, see, here's some hemp. So you can just grab that. Make ropes with that. You might be able to do some other stuff with it. I think you can make a tea with it eventually. I am terribly sorry, Mercenaries, 
But there is nothing of interest for you. This is but a simple sawmill. Sure. It's just a simple sawmill. But there happens to be a trap. No, it's locked. Yeah, I have to come back here. Oh, now we got the wood cutting. Now this is where it's starting to hurt that I don't have more people, right? You know, I, you know, I need a wood cutter. Uh, but I don't have that many people. Let's see, what does a wood cutter do? Strength plus one. This will mean I, I'll have to hold off on my tinkering if I go for this. That's a good occupation for somebody. You get strength. Let's go ahead and chop some wood. Fine. Choppy chop. Press left mouse button when the green circle overlaps the gray one together. So it's kind of a timing game and a see how well you are with your mouse. Let's see if you can line that up exactly. Ooh, got perfection. You can tell I've done that a few times. Huh? <laughs> so we can click over and let's see how much speed we got for that. So five. So if I just find four more of those, I'll be able to upgrade my wood cutting. Probably get some more strength. And these things will recharge eventually. If I come back later, that wood will be back. And I can... Uh, lost my train of thought there. Oh, chop again, yeah. Chopity chopity. Now this is a fatigue bar. Uh oh, what's happening? Oh, I'm attacked by boars! Uh, so the animals are a little different than people. If you capture them, you capture them with a rope instead of a chain. And they're actually really fun to have in your party. Uh, they can attack. Uh, they have special abilities. Depending on what class you are, you can actually benefit from your passives, like this guy. Forest Guardian. Each time an allied animal dies, this unit gains fury. And so if you have a certain type of archer, or they can, or ranger, I guess, they can also get the same ability. That one's probably not so useful. Uh, but, it's something. Now you notice, too, I also have a spear throw item up there. Every now and then there'll be these little things on the battlefield you can use. Uh, but it's got, the animal would have to be in that range to use it. Okay, so once again, probably going to go with this guy. Do I want to move anybody around? might move him to, to here. It's a little bit tricky because I don't want my archer to get attacked by a boar. Let's go ahead and try this. Okay. Yeah, see, there's my, there's my encouragement. Yeah, why not we, why don't we just use it just to see what it does. Okay, so that should put protection on these guys for two rounds. It's a good time to do it, right? Start up the battle. Yeah, he should be engaged now. Yep. And then this pig there will get the next attack, so he'll probably go over to Astius, which is fine, as long as he doesn't go to my archer. Okay, and these guys, at least they're not poisoning or making me bleed. And once again, I could uh, attack with him. Yeah, might as well. You know, like all these games, if, the, if an enemy has one health point left, it could still do full damage. So you really want to kill. Not leave stuff hanging on if you can. Alright. Now this pig is not engaged. Right? That's important to notice. So he could attack. If I move somebody next to him, he's going to attack. He could attack him. So something to think about. Let's see, it's an interesting little choice I could make. I don't think he'll move away, so I'm going to put my archer there. Go ahead and attack this pig. Oh, you see? <laughs> so he missed the target, but it's okay because it's fine to hit that guy. Okay, then we got our other pig. Now, I don't, again, I don't want to move my here uh, because then that board can get an attack on him, but if I move him here, it should be fine. But he's not behind him, see, so he doesn't get that ambush bonus. Alright, everything looks good. Boar attack. 
now I should be able to get all the way behind him. Yeah, here we go. All right, and I got Fury because we filled up the morale meter. Uh, so you can see why you want the... I guess this is something to be said for willpower. You get that high enough and you'll get these... Unlock those special abilities fast. Get a little extra movement. Go ahead and move him into position. And the archer just take another shot. You know, by the way, uh, the archers didn't do the most kills. <laughs> uh, I kill more people with my archers than, than anything. So it's something to think about uh, later when you get some options for what you want to do to get more valor points. One of them is to, to kill an enemy, you get a valor point. So I like to put those on my archers. Uh, your opponents are demoralized and flee. You want to let them go and win the battle? Now, I still don't know the answer to this. If I let them go, does that mean I get to keep all the, uh, uh, the boar head? You know, <laughs> where the, <laughs> the boar's head? Does that mean I get to keep all the, the loot? Or do they get away with their loot? So I've never been sure of that, so I'll just say, no, don't let them flee. We'll just take them all out, just to make sure. Shouldn't be too hard. So again, you gotta consider how much damage are you taking. Uh, they're banging up your armor real bad. You have to use your uh, spare parts. Right, he's got a little bit of health left, but I think I should be able to finish him off. Right. Boom! And so now we got some carcasses, some pork, some pristine fangs that we can use to trade with trackers. Get some really, really cool stuff, so you don't want to waste those. Grease and some leather. Take all that, and you see now we got a repair. And it's going to take raw materials, which are dwindling. <laughs> but what else can you do? Now we can upgrade our uh, our brute. Now I think this vanguard is really cool because this charge is amazing. But we'll be missing out on the heavy armor. Uh, oh my god, it's a tough call, but I just... This uh, Relentless Charge is such a great ability, I just got to go with it. <laughs> it's just too freaking useful. And again, I have the raise. Uh, so the only double one is the Constitution, so I'll go ahead and take that. You know, I kind of like my people to stay alive. But strength would be the best thing to raise. We got a little, a few little goodies hiding in the woods here. Now, if I stay in the woods for a while, it should give me an ambush. Yeah, ambusher status. Uh, so now, now if I can attack somebody with this status, I think they, uh, I don't know if they take increased damage or just a couple of reasons to ambush. All right, and then we get the camping because my little fatigue bar ran out. Not a lot I can do at this point. I don't even have a cooking pot. I really need to get some other people here so we can have a uh, <clears throat> tinkerer start making some equipment like tents and a cooking pot and so on and so forth. But we're really limited what we can do now. I think about all we can do is eat. <laughs> and ideally, yeah, you don't want to waste food. It's just This food doesn't have any buffs on it. Later on, of course, you, know, you get all sorts of amazing buffs from this delicious food that your camp chef is making. So you get two valor points, four happiness points. Everybody's happy. <laughs> get an extra valor point. Oh, we do have a workshop here. So at least they give you the workshop. But we don't have anybody that can tinker. We definitely need to get... First thing we'll need to do... Just hire some people or capture some people so we can have fill out the rest of those professions. So let's keep on. We're trying to head kind of south. But there's a, a little mountain in the way. It's easy. If you get up to the top of a mountain, you can use what they call pythons to repel down them. But it doesn't work going up. <laughs> right. Picking up all sorts of juicy little goods. Uh, and then we have the Highland Trackers Camp. And they usually 
Uh, they won't take money, they just take the, uh, those teeth, fangs. Let's chop again. chop it, chop it, chop 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 Wood is necessary for your campfire. You can make coal with it instead of buying. Plus, most of the stuff that you need to make for your camp will require enormous amounts of wood. Okay, now we can check out what these guys Name's do. Name's Brennan, Master Tracker. Our brotherhood is if you want to join us. Yeah, every uh, region will typically have these trackers and they'll have a hunt for you to go on. Come back victorious. A little extra quest. And you Don't get some... even bother trying to sell me your filth. I'm yeah, there's the meat drying rack, which rituals. would be really nice. We don't have nearly enough fangs, but just keep an eye on what you can make. Uh, there's a recipe here for perch, an item that you can put on your uh, animals that you capture. You can buy a trap, unless you get some game that way. Let's see what else. Yeah, these uh, re reinforced layers, you can put those on the armor. And the nice thing about those is uh, eventually you'll be able to put them on and take them off for a small fee. So you can make some really good layers and that will dramatically improve your armor. Envious of our war paint, are you? Sorry, mercenaries. To yeah, become this business with the war paint. The lucky so. few. You must if you really covered. want that sort of Celtic or look, uh, you had to jump through a few hoops to get access to that. Don't even bother trying. Okay, I think that's about all I can do for the moment here. Oh, I did get another compendium point. Let's see, is there anything I just have to have? Not a lot. Yeah, I have to... Hmm, what's this? I don't think I can actually select any of these yet. I probably need at least one blacksmith. Uh, so now we, we can pick anything from the basic knowledge. Let's see, is there anything here that's just super useful? Smooth talk might actually be nice. Uh, recruitment costs reduced by 10%. Or oh, you could get wage reductions. I kind of like the ones that have a percentage uh, versus the ones that are just uh, a number. <laughs> like free food is not going to be important later on. But 10%, uh, you know, that will scale as you get more and more people. Or you could uh, raise our carrying capacity by just, just again, just a flat number 10 uh, this is a good one. Uh, maximum Valor points increased by one. Uh, that's a really good one. Uh, I don't really know how useful the Smooth Talk is going to be eventually. It might be good for now. You know, I might just save this point for now. Looking at yeah, cannibalism. So if you want to eat human corpses... That's okay, I can just hold on to that point for a while. Let's exit out of here. I don't think there's any reason to go further that direction. Well, actually strike that, I think we do need to go through the woods. There's a little bit of that snow iris that we need for our alchemy. Wood. Oh, see, I let my run bar run out. Now we gotta wait for that to recharge. Get the ambusher status. Okay. You know, some of the skills you can get, for example, will uh, let you collect more stuff. Uh, is this the guys I'm supposed to kill? Amateur hunters. Okay, so we just need to warn these guys. We don't have to attack them. We came to hunt for food for our families, but the animals here. <laughs> she looks kind of scared, doesn't she? <laughs> on end. I'm beginning to wonder if we did the right thing coming here. But now uh, that we're here, we can't see. go back empty-handed. Okay, I don't have any venison to give them, but I could use some of my influence, and I get some rope. Let's do that. I see. Thank you for warning us. Thanks to you, we'll get back to our families. The rope? Uh, you need that to build a lot of stuff. 
Uh, but it also lets you capture animals. That's probably what I'll use it for, because I'd like to have an animal or two. You can, if nothing else, you can run them in and let the enemies attack them. <laughs> Instead of your guys, it's fairly easy to get more. Or, you know, the animals do level up. I like to get a bear as soon as possible, because they are really good at tanking. Unfortunately, you can't put any kind of armor on anything. The only thing that can wear armor, apparently, is the ponies. It's kind of irritating. I wish they'd fix that. It'd be pretty cool if you could make, like, bear armor. And all this different kind of armor for different kinds of animals. This is purple thing. Somebody needs our help! The wealthy fall. Even the lightning plays a role in combat. <laughs> There'll be certain parts of the battlefield where somehow you know the lightning's about to strike there. If you're really strategic or tactical how to make your enemies get on those spots and instantly die. Do not take pity on this scoundrel! He fled his home country to come and steal our crops. This Edoranian leech will be strung up for his crime. Looks like we got a refugee that turned thief. Are you... are you mercenaries? Oh, blessed be... You must warn my husband's friends. They need to come and help him. Yes, ask them to come. If only they could speak in his favor. Oh, interesting. Reason with the people who want to kill him for a handful of grain. get a bar of soap? Let's see what the other options are here. I am terribly sorry. I shouldn't have agreed to this, but we'd run out of food. All right, so again, not uh, necessarily clear who the good guys and bad guys are, right? Do you, do you want to side with the farmer? Who's kind of right, you know, that they were stealing their crops, but on the other hand, they're starving to death. So what do you do? You must warn my husband's friends. They it's need the to husband. come and help him. Yes, ask them to come. If oh, okay. only they I'm kind of curious what a bar is so good. My husband so. only told me that his friends live north of the lake. So they're probably going to come down and kill that farmer. That's just the kind of game it is. <laughs> you know, again, I don't like a game that makes you always feel bad no matter what choices you make. That's what, probably my only real criticism of the game. You know, some people might actually think that's a plus. Difficult decisions. Choices matter. Alright. Here we have the ringleader. We just have to vanquish these guys. Then we'll go back and collect our bounties. and We'll have more money. We should be able to hire some more people. And then we'll get... Hire some more uh, troops. Yeah, see what I was telling you about that red circle there. Uh, lightning's going to strike there and kill anybody that happens to be in that circle. So we really don't want our guys in the circle. Okay, interesting. Now, the thing with the uh, the leader tag on these guys. So if you want these people to surrender, you have to get rid of their leaders first. And we won't be able to capture them. Can't capture anybody anyway because we don't have uh, any chains. It's always a question of how you want to position everybody. This guy's all up here by himself, but he's got a shield. He's going to be up against this hoodlum that can probably poison you. Yep. So, hmm. You know, one thing you could do is put everybody together and then use that. That protection ability. But I kind of like this setup. We'll go ahead and do this, try to keep him occupied. And then let's see how far he can move. So he should be able to tie up this leader. Probably the best move. Let's go ahead. You know, then again, let's move him here. Get this hoodlum occupied. Now I can use one of my Valor Points to charge. And you can see I can damage two people with that. But position it right. 
Uh, the only problem with that is I unengaged, disengaged. So he's a free agent still. Let's just see what happens. Okay. Now we can try to move him somewhere useful. Probably there. Back. You know, this, it might be worth this. Even though it only gets two people in there. These are the two that will probably be getting hit, so... Let's go ahead and activate that. Let's see. Oh yeah, this will... Uh, this comfrey on the battlefield, you can't really collect it and take it with you, but... If you do... Uh, you know, get hit with a bunch of stacks of... Uh, poison or something, you could run to, run to that spot. <laughs> Trying to think and chew gum and play games at the same time. Well, that wasn't very impressive. Let's see, who's he gonna hit? Yeah, these archers can be real pains. Some of them have area effects. Now, see, if I move here, he's probably gonna get attacked by that hoodlum. But I still think that might be the best move. Yeah, so we got him surrounded. Surrounded two allies to get a bonus. Okay. So he's got three people on him, so he's surrounded. Let's see what that does. Damage taken increased by 20%. So that's good to know. Yeah, also if they're engaged and you hit them with another unit, uh, that other unit has a 10% chance of taking a, uh, a critical hit or 20% from behind. So basically, you want to engage with uh, your strong character with a shield, and then have your other guys come up behind him, ideally, or at least surround him and get those various bonuses. All right, so he poisoned my rogue here. So that's going to do a lot of damage. Plus, it engaged him, so he can't uh, attack this guy. So that's suboptimal. <laughs> Let's see, we'll go ahead and move him. Got to watch out for this light thing. attack there. Now if I use my vigilance, or my, yeah, my aim, I could hit that rogue up there, but yeah, probably still not worth it. Let's keep working on that poacher there. Okay, let's see if I can take out this guy. There. Oh, now we can use wraths. This will be cool. All right, excellent. Now my rogue is free again. I can move him back here and do a backstab. <laughs> I think I just stepped in a trap. <laughs> oh well. Oh look, he's still got a little bit of health left, so he'll get another round. And the poison's gonna keep working me down. Oh, and he hit him with an oh, a stupid archer. So that rogue has a good chance of dying at this point. Ooh, unlocked a glorious. Chance to generate one Valor Point at the end of their turn. Oh, that's a good trait. Oh, it also earns 20% more profession experience. Excellent stuff. Alright. Go ahead and move down here. He'll still be able to fire his bow because he's not engaged. But at least I'm closer. Now, I really have to do something about this poison before uh, it has a chance to kill him, but I think I can... Uh, the battle, and then we'll have to worry about it. But if that guy with the poison had another turn, you know, he might actually die. Oh. I don't like it when characters die. Alright, another specialization. Well, we don't get quite to the specialization yet, I guess. Uh, level 2. Oh yeah, this is what I was talking about. Ways to get Valor points. And so you could, if you end your turn next to an enemy, you're not engaged in combat, you gain one point, which is pretty likely, given he's a rogue, he'd be creeping up behind a lot of people, do not kill him. Uh, so in that case, you get a point. Or, if you kill him, you get a point. Or, if you're standing next to an ally, and not engaged, you get a point. So you have to try to think, what would be more likely for this guy? He's probably going to be getting a lot of kills, I would imagine, but... Maybe even more likely to be next to an enemy but not engaged because he'd be behind him, right? 
So I'm gonna go with this. We'll just see. Uh, good news is we can raise the dexterity up two points. Excellent. We've got some uh, lockpick. Ooh, a ringleader's dagger. Let's look at that dagger. Okay, this has a devious whirlwind. Now this is where it gets tricky. Because uh, it's not until much later in the game that we'll actually be able to swap weapons. And even then it's kind of a painful choice, choice whether you want that ability. Uh, but basically what we'll have, uh, if we take this, then he's going to have this uh, area of effect. And a lot of times it might actually hit one of our own people. And again, we'll be losing that really nice uh, backstab ability. So it's kind of a tough call. You know, if I could swap out uh, the weapons, I would take this, because if I'm in a situation where I can hit a bunch of enemies, it'd be nice. But otherwise, it's not. And I could even end up uh, poisoning my own people. If this attack hits several units, it creates a cloud of poison under each one of them. It's a very powerful ability, uh, but it will be a limited use <laughs> tacti tactically. Be very careful how you use it. So I'll just leave it in my inventory for now. Okay, continue on. Now see, we already have to camp again. And again, though, I think about all we can do is eat some of our bread. <laughs> A little bit of fruit. Sometimes people have different uh, dietary requirements. You know, like some people have to have booze. Some people will only eat fruits and vegetables. Okay. We got two of these compendium points. Now let's hold off on that till we get back to town. Oh, we also have a path point. Uh, so this is basically how you win the game. When you get, I think it's, uh, well, I think if you, I don't know if it's, you have to get all of them fully uh, leveled out. But if you, I know for sure if you keep working on this, eventually you'll, you'll have an option to quit the game. The credits will roll. Okay, so we got one point for exploration. Discover five locations, you get one PP. <laughs> you know, there's uh, ways you can make, make it so you get more points. Now, this opens up a lot of cool essential abilities, so you don't want to just let that sit. I'll always be checking that. I won't be able to cross into that other border zone yet. Because you will need either a pass or a bunch of gold. And I've been going to a different zone until I explore this one. Yeah, I think the best thing for us at this point is to... Well, I think that's where that... Let's see. Yeah. I think that's where that lady's, uh, or that guy's friends are. Might as well get that over with. Nope, I went too far. <laughs> Back. You notice how they run faster when it's downhill? You know, it's little touches like that that I really appreciate. I'm gonna go slower in the woods. Oh, now we might be able to ambush these uh, boars here. There we go. So watch what happens now. Have an advantage in the fight. It has some rope. Maybe we'll be able to capture one of these animals. Let's see what the advantage is. Damage taken increased by 10%. Okay. Now, capturing these things is a little bit tricky. Let's see if we can do this. Okay. No, no, can't quite do that. Let's go ahead and... I don't really want to use up all my Valor points right away. But then again, I can get all three of them, so we're going to use them. <laughs> okay, then hopefully one will turn around. Let's see what this one does. Hopefully, we'll go for him. Oh! He's going for my other. That's okay. Oh! Yeah, I'm used to, you know, my other game, I have, uh, all the characters have these special helmets that let them, anything, anytime they get attacked, they automatically attack back. Don't have that yet. Okay, so instead of attacking, let's see if we can capture this animal. Yeah, capture. So they have to be less than half of the health, you have to have a chain or a rope, 
and they have to be engaged with somebody else. So we could try this. Man, I got it! So that's a little wolf that we can add to our party. Unfortunately, that did use up my uh, action. So let's... Oh. I'm moving back. I was just thinking if I'd ended next to the enemy, I would have gotten a Valor Point. But, on the other hand... I might also have taken a lot of damage. Just leave him there. Now I think... Yeah, this guy should be able to hit him. I'm not sure if there's a limit on how many animals you can capture in one uh, battle. You don't want to get too many because then you'll, you know, you do have to feed them. These wolves aren't particularly great in my experience. Okay. Kill him. Great. Ooh, we unlocked another trait. Oh, the wolf did. Okay. Yeah, the wolf. Uh, <laughs> uh, they can also level up. It's pretty neat. They can carry stuff for you. Uh, this is kind of yucky. Uh, so the only one that's got double the points is for movement. I guess movement's not too bad for an archer. You know, maybe he needs to go a long ways to get the position. Yeah, they're definitely going to go for the kill with him. Okay, let's take a look at our wolf. Uh, so he's got an injury. Let's see what does this injury do. He can no longer deal a critical hit. I have to use the medicine to heal him up. Well, you could change his name. He's got a... Uh, each attack against a unit without armor applies bleeding. So that's pretty useful. He's got all these abilities. Oh, his, his carrying capacity is reduced. Must consume meat or fish at every meal to be satisfied. Has a chance to not suffer injuries. So pretty useful addition to the pot, eh? Again, if nothing else, we can let him take the brunt of the punishment. But have we talked to these people already? Have we been here already? Our boss is open to recruiting anyone, including refugees. Yeah. One of our new recruits hasn't returned from his first assignment. He probably now, these just are the people I'm supposed to talk to. He yeah, seems Warren. capable enough. Oh, caught red-handed <laughs> on his first try. He cannot hang by my fault. Pack it up, lads. So now you have to decide if you want to fight those farmers. Who are kind of, uh... Oh, we can grab some boots. Yeah. You know, you're supposed to be able to hold down the alt key and see outlines around stuff you can interact with. It doesn't work. It's just so subtle. I don't find it all that useful. I wish it was a better looking outline that I could actually make out. <laughs> this stuff. Okay, we still got a little bit of room for more, more baggage, but we're going to have to go back and sell some stuff soon. Also move these guys around. I don't know if that makes any difference in terms of how stuff is not laid out. Let's go ahead and save it before we go fight that big group. <laughs> this is for trick What are you doing? Turn? Nope. Content. Okay. Got an ambush. That oh, it went away. That's too bad. I guess I don't want you to be able to ambush for this fight. Release the refugee immediately. But you, you brought bandits, mercenaries. Are you willing to let them slaughter us to save a thief? He's just a desperate farmer. Let him go and no harm will come to Who's to say you won't be back in a few days to plunder our supplies? No. <sighs> so you we see what I mean. Difficult choices. Whatever those thieves promised you, I can pay you much more to defend us. You also have to consider what's going to be the easier fight. You know, do we want to fight these uh, hardened troops? Or the poachers and scoundrels? 
Bandits. So villagers or bandits? What's your choice? <laughs> you know, I went with the uh, villagers last time. And so I guess we'll just keep it interesting. Fight them this time. This will be a more difficult fight. Yeah, we'll let you attack both. <laughs> so, we'll see what we can do with this. And again, I don't really like the moral implications of all of this. Uh, some characters are important. If they die, the battle will end. And yeah, so it's basically a liability. This Elizabeth character, and she'll probably run right into the heart of the battle. I see definitely a more difficult battle here. Got this fog of war going. Soldier. Got a couple over there. So yeah, probably want one tank close to her. I don't know if it makes a whole lot of sense for this guy to be over there by himself. There might be more enemies than this. There's seven total. That's where that guy is. Right, so some people are definitely still hidden. All right, well, what to do? I think I'll move. Let's see if I can get closer to that guy. Yeah, see, there's the village chief. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> okay, got him engaged. At least I have some allies. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Oh, and bleeding too. I'm sensing a reload happening. We'll see, but I, I always reload when one of my main people die. Looks like he is going to die for sure, unless I can really... But he hid in that mist. Yeah. I didn't quite make it over there. If I can get over there quick enough, maybe I can... Oh no! Oh, this is going terribly. Terribly! Not good. Let's see, maybe she can fight. Of course, she's bleeding, and bleeding is almost as bad as the poison. I think it was 20%. I mean, you see how ridiculous this is? So, you know, sometimes a bear, it's like a thousand hit points that get bleeding on it. And so it's just going down like it was made out of paper. Right, we're definitely not doing well. Need to even these odds. The hoodlum. He can die. <laughs> this wolf might save the day. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't control the wolf yet. This is good protection on, but I think she's just taking too much damage already. This bleeding is just going to be terrible. Yeah, 20% of her health every turn is ridiculous. And it even even if you're dying, it still lingers on. Yeah, I'm going to have to reload this, folks. I can see that right now. Definitely losing this battle. Oh. What I probably want to do is go back to town, get some more troops, level up a little more, and then come back and you know, see what I can do. Like, I, if I disengage from this guy, he's going to get an attack of opportunity, probably finish me off. So, might as well just keep attacking. But this is truly terrible. Yeah, he'll go down. But since he's got that stupid bleeding crap on him, he's just going to keep losing. If I, if I don't heal him before his next turn, he's dead permanently. Alright, got a temporary uh, point, but I don't really have anything good to use it on. He doesn't have first aid, so... This is just going to be a fail. <laughs> i go ahead and play it out. But yeah, it's just... He's definitely going to die. The only guy I have that's got any first aid is engaged in combat. This guy's about dead, too. Yeah. 
Terribly. Yeah, nothing else I can do. He'll be dead. Yeah, he's dead now. And they will still attack him just because he's dying. Oh, even she's dead. Yeah, we're... <laughs> yeah, okay. This is why you uh, have your uh, free save. Because <laughs> we don't want to... If you if you do the auto save, it'll just start this battle over. And I don't think we got a chance of winning it. Uh, so we're just going to have to postpone this little conflict until we can get some more, uh, more power. We are too weak for that. We need better equipment. Maybe even a couple more levels and some more troops. It's okay. I think it's it's quite nice to be to have a challenge like that and realize you yeah it's a role playing game you get to level up some more get some more stuff then you can come back and stand a chance <laughs> probably wouldn't hurt either to have a full uh, rest and have all my valor points okay let's turn first of all let's uh, go turn in our quests. <laughs> Might she be looking for work? Yes. Here is your reward. So now we actually have some money. Who the rat infestation. Those are great, but I don't know if we'd survive it at this point. Yeah, we're having a hard enough time with the ones that are uh, <laughs> easy. <laughs> don't think we want to be hard. Okay, now let's see if we can hire some people. The bandits took everything I had. Well, we don't want another brute. Oh, come on. Wait, that's the informant you. again. Yeah, you. Of course. You're then at... I thought there was a... If you pay well, I'll come with... Oh, crap. He's, I've already got a swordsman. I think that's all we can hire, too, at the moment. I have to come back later. Wait, there's one more. If I join you... Ugh. Great, so they're all duplicates. I don't really want duplicates. There was a spearman here earlier. I don't know how long we'll have to wait to come back, but I think it's worth a little delay. Okay, well, I'm trying to think of what else I can do. I might be able to forge something. <laughs> Some rags. <laughs> Well, these aren't all that impressive, but it's better than what I have, so let's go ahead and create them. Alright, now this is a fairly difficult minigame, the blacksmithing. So this will, we'll have to hit these plates at a certain time. Press the button when the metal plate sparks to forge an item of superior quality. It's, like I say, it's very difficult to time this. I don't know what the trick is. Oh, see, I accidentally clicked Got two of them. And ordinarily, I would reload that until I got all four, because <laughs> you get a much better item uh, with more slots on it. But I know you don't want to sit there and watch me do this over and over again, so we're just going to keep on rolling. Yeah, and of course, I want this probably on my tank. <laughs> Rags. So again, not anything impressive, but it does it does give him three more points of armor. And I can put his uh, armor on somebody else. So we're gradually upgrading. And we can save these farmer's rags. They might still be better than what some people have. Ooh, those angler's rags are great. That's neat. <laughs> okay. Then we can maybe sell those. You can use my anvil. I can also repair your armor. Oh, and I'm looking to hire a skilled blacksmith. Let's see what else if we you have here. No we got a little iron ore. We don't have enough coal. Let's see if it's worth uh, buying some. Okay. Throwing knives are good for your rangers. They can put those in their offhand and get a little extra attack that way. A shield would be a nice item. 
I would need apparently some leather for that. Now we can look in the compendium to see if we've learned any new recipes. Usually what you have to do is make... Like I bet if we make this targ, targ, yeah, it'll reveal a new recipe. So we could learn a new thing. But you have to make at least one targ. But to do that, we need leather. And I don't have any leather. That's why I need that tanning rack. Okay, so what do we want to do? Let's go ahead and go to the apothecary. See if we can make some medicine. Good, we'll make two medicines. Get him some XP. You know, I'd like to have some of these oils too, but we don't have enough vials of fish oil. Probably don't want to waste it on crappy items we have available to us at the moment. Okay, we got 567 gold. But I don't I don't want to hire those guys that we have available right now. Just duplicates. The bandits duplicates. took everything I had. I have nothing left no, to don't, don't hire. I'll tell you what, let's do a quick little adventure, come back. And maybe uh if the horseshoe fits. Now maybe by the time we come back the uh we'll swap out those uh companions. I wish I had some chains. I don't think you can make chains. At least I was never able to figure out how to make them. But you can certainly buy them. We've already got a camp. Maybe we can, uh, maybe after this camping we'll be ready. Oh, look. Man, that's another profession called the scholar. Yeah, we, we've got a long ways we need to go here. <laughs> oh, man. I'm gonna need a getting kind of desperate for that chef. I'm gonna throw some booze in there. They can just eat a carcass. You know the carcasses are better if you dry the meat on them, and then you get two pieces of meat. But I think for now, yeah, I'll just throw the carcass in there. <laughs> yeah, chew on that. We are getting kind of desperate for some more adventurers, so I might just have to take a duplicate, even if, even if it is some some class we already have. I really would prefer it if we could have one of each uh, class. Oh, is it the same ones? Crap. If you pay well, that sucks. I guess it must be a long, must be a couple days if before I you get you. fresh people. That is suboptimal, folks. What can I say? Feel free I guess to we'll come just uh, keep often. going. Well, there's always folk looking for work around here. Yeah, but it's the same, folks. You know, another option would be to go to the prison. Yeah, let's go to the jail. <laughs> Maybe we could hire a convict. Yeah, let's see. It's free cloth. I would show you the fishing mini game, but again, we don't have enough. People can't have multiple professions. The fishing one, though, is really cool. What's this? Well, let's go up here to the prison. If nothing else, we can buy a chain. And start trying to capture some outlaws to turn in for bounties. These guys come from. Okay, yeah, I don't want to start with him because then he'd just get attacked. He wouldn't be able to do his backstabs. Let's see. It's always worthwhile kind of playing around with placement. You know, again, one strategy I could use is just to capture a bunch of wolves, use them for cannon fodder. I think I'll just uh, kill these guys. Get some meat, get some leather. This is fine. 
have the animation sped up all the way. By the way. <laughs> Otherwise, it can get a little slow. Oh. I'm gonna go ahead and use this because he's got that. He gets a, a valor point if you kill somebody. A little temporary points. So it's, sometimes it's worth it. I'm gonna use a valor point, but then I get a temporary valor point right away. Why not? Although those will not carry over to the next battle. There we go, nice and simple. I guess he took a little bit of damage. Got some of those teeth. <laughs> we need hundreds and hundreds of those teeth. Oh, this is truly getting painful. So the only thing that helps a pony is, is uh, carrying capacity. Let me just see, do I have the... Oh, there we go. I can learn career plans. I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Even though it takes two whole points. Now, oops. now though, I can choose what I want to. I just pay some uh, influence to raise the one I want. So definitely... No point in putting anything else on a pony besides Constitution. Alright, we got a bear. Could hire that bear. The Lady Mayoness has offered a reward for Recipe, any outlaw ether, captured toothpaste. in the region. You know, Toothpaste is kind of fun because he gets some special perks with that, I noticed. I definitely want to buy a chain. It's kind of expensive. Let's go ahead and buy a couple of chains. As fun as that is, I'm going to wait. Yeah, if we had a prisoner to hand over, uh, we could get 20. Or, uh... Oh, they could give you more than that. I don't have any outlaws at the moment, but... It's a good way to make money. Now, we can also... I don't want spring one of here. these uh, convicts out of jail. Oh, perfect! A spearman. Okay, or spearwoman, I guess, in this case. Let's go ahead and recruit her. Wait... Alright, cowardly. In combat will flee if morale drops too low. She must eat fruit and vegetables. <laughs> I don't like her. <laughs> uh, willpower increased by two. Okay, that's good. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and take her though, because we, we just have to have more people. Your companions doubt she's up to the task. Uh-oh. So they don't like her. And there is a lot of uh, personality management in this game. How did it end up here? Yeah, so this looks like just a normal bear. These are great for tanking, but I'm pretty sure I could capture one later. Money. And let's see, do we have any gear we can equip her with? She's got the angler's rags. Pitchfork. Okay, but we can give her a profession. Alchemist. You got an alchemist, right? Let me see, what do I have already? We definitely need a tinkerer. Uh, fisherman, though. I probably need a tinkerer more than I need a fisherman, but it's just so much fun fishing. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and make her a fisher person. Fisher lady? Fisher? What the hell? I don't care. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. Angler! There we go. And we can make her an angler. And then we can fish. If we had a hook. <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> I forgot we need a hook. Uh, I don't have anybody that can even make hooks. That's what the tinkers are for. Oh, you know what we need to do? Is get some captured convicts. Or get some uh, prisoners, and they can do those professions. Let's see about these guys down here. Oh. I guess we're committed now. Where's Should... them refugees? We'll toss them out. Yeah, I've been drinking. We all have. <laughs> How do you know? You seers or something? Yeah. Never mind. Leave us be. We could give we her some cider and get rid of them, or we could attack. Probably safer to just give them some cider. 
But I'd sure like to have. I got those chains now. Yeah, what the hell? Level one. We should be able to take these. Maybe we can capture one and put them in our party. Okay, three of them. I don't know if I like my archer over there by herself. Let's move. Uh, let's move this around a little bit. Kind of always playing with the idea of you want them close enough to be able to use their abilities. Which... Okay, that one's gonna attack first. I'll tell you what, knowing that, move him in and engage. Now to use that capture ability, they have to have no armor and health less than 50%, so it's delicate. <laughs> this is only a certain window when you can use it. I don't want to move him there because it would attack for that guy. Sure. Him into position. Engage that spearman, and they're not as effective close up. So that will reduce that a little bit. Good, so far, so good. Now I can backstab with impunity. I have to be careful next turn just to do enough damage to capture him. If that's the one I end up capturing. Let's see, I should just be able to get him. Yeah, these archers are not impressive at the moment, but man, later, they are going to be some of your best people. Now, the thing with these, uh, uh, spearmen. Now, they could do a lot of cool things. I don't know if I have the abilities right now for this, but if you line them up next to one of your other melee characters, and every time that melee character that's engaged gets attacked, the Spearman will get a free attack of opportunity. So it's a really good strategy. Uh, plus, they can attack at a distance without having to engage, which is another really cool feature. Like I say, if you get the rangers, uh, the Beastmaster, I think it's called, then you can control these animals. Alright, we got a new round, so let's see. That should do this. Okay. Now, next turn, I should be able to capture him. Now, it'll be a while before they'll uh, join our party, but do camp tasks for us. Perfect. One. Now these aren't outlaws, so we won't be able to hand in for a bounty. Other than that, it should be good. He's in turns anyway, but I'll get him in position. And again, attack. You know, I wonder if I could go for two. Oh, that's tempting. Well, I guess we could see. No, I can't. Uh... I'm not sure what the limits are on. You can take more than one prisoner per battle if there's like a cap on that. Sometimes it doesn't seem to want to let you do it even though it looks like you should. Okay, go ahead. I've got my couple of uh, temporary Valor points, so might as well use them because you lose them if you don't use them. It's a use them or lose them proposition. Yeah, I definitely can't. See, I can't. Uh, there's no capture button there. It doesn't matter. You can be right up on top of them and still use your, your bow. Ooh, got a Beck de Corbin of the Guard. Oh, heavy strike. That looks like a pretty nice upgrade for my uh, brute. Excited about that. And then we have a new person. <laughs> Welcome to the little party. Okay, now we have to decide how we want to specialize our protector. You know, these are the ones I was... Uh, let's see, what, what are the options? Oh yeah, this is the same as before, so... If you hit several enemies, you get one. If you engage in combat, you get one. If they're engaged in combat, you gain one. What's the difference here? Every time this unit engages in combat, you gain one point. Or, you get this deflection ability. Defensive stance. I think that's a, something I have to. That's yeah, an instant. So I'd have to actually uh, use a. 
an action for that, I think. Or is this something I could turn on? If you're engaged in combat, you gain one point. Yeah, that's an interesting choice. I think this Valorous duel will probably come up more than anything. Every time he engages in combat, you get a point. That's so pretty good. As a tank, he's going to be getting that quite often. Then let's use our career plans again. Up up strength this time. Ooh. We need more influence, I can tell you that. Go ahead and treat their injury. Yeah, they like us better. Treated their injury. And this guy uses a what? What is that? I doubt that's a hammer or an axe. Go ahead and give that. Give our brute here the better weapon. He will lose the pound skill. The damage is increased by 50% if target still has armor. Or just do an extra. I'll go ahead and swap that out, I guess. And we don't have anything to give this person, though. Hmm. Got one chain left. Okay. Oh, they're already set up as a tinker. They don't have any experience, but we can use them. Let's see. Yep. We can put her or him. Menrick on the tinker table. You can see there's all sorts of stuff we can make. Lock picks, pythons, fish hooks, a rope, a cooking pot. Definitely going to need that. Unfortunately, I don't think we have a cook yet, but camp chest, I don't see any point in that. Unless you're stealing lots of items. That's a way to sell off your stolen merch. Uh, if it's got a, uh, this on it, this little knowledge point that will help us learn some more skills. So it's worthwhile basically to make everything once, even if you just want to sell it. But I definitely want a couple of fish hooks. Okay. Um, I think I got a couple of ropes left. We're definitely going to need a. Uh, we need everything basically, but. Uh, I would make a cooking pot right now, but we just don't have anybody that left over <laughs> to cook. <laughs> Uh, they can cook, so we're kind of limited there. Oh, this is going to eat up all my salt to make a hitching post. Uh, the tent. Oh, tough calls. Let's go ahead and make a rope, I guess. Just to get the experience. Yeah, got a knowledge point. We're going to need a lockpick at some point. Let's go ahead and make one of those. Actually, be honest, you need at least probably two or three of those if you ever find a chest. You just don't want to use up all of your precious resources. Let's just stop for now. Okay. Yeah, so this guy doesn't have anything to do. But we can fish now. Oh, look, there's a salt mine. I'm going to save it while I'm thinking about it. problem with that prisoner is they could run away. So you don't, probably don't want to give them a lot of good gear and stuff until they're committed to your party. If, in fact, Stop you Stop right there. This salt mine belongs to her ladyship Gontrand. I can't just let you walk in. Why not? And so we could give them money, we could threaten them, or persuade them. I find the I hate using up As all my wish. influence, but uh we can't mine the salt because of these two wine. Uh but the influence I typically have more of that than anything else at a certain point in the game, so yeah, I don't think I got a miner, do I? <laughs> no, I'm just I've gotta have more people. I can't even mine yet. But if I did, I'd get some iron ore. Okay, let's see, what am I doing? Go ahead and go over there and see if we can do that. So, we're going to be camping soon. I'm a little bit worried because uh, you know, that prisoner could escape, lose our tinker. 
see what happens though. Maybe we will. I guess I could put this guy over there to watch. I put a wolf over there too. <laughs> I'll put the pony over. This is completely around him. All right. Hopefully they won't escape. Now we're getting really down to the wire with our food. Have to keep eating raw crap. Can't even cook it. Okay, this isn't gonna. Oh, we gotta pay our wages too. Let's see. Hopefully that person won't get away. Yeah, but the tinker, they also make raw materials. I forgot about that. So as long as uh, they work in that table, we get a few raw materials. Oh, and then the characters also have these little, little, little mini character arcs that take place. So every now and then you get one of these little choices. Give an aptitude point or more influence. Gets everybody gets some abilities. Or you get an aptitude point. Probably XP. So. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. That way we get an instant boost to something. Uh, critical hits, you know, not not a bad thing, but I just think strength. Is the way to go. See, my characters are already getting substantially better. Probably still want to get some more upgrades before we take on that big fight that kicked our ass. Alright. What's going on here? Save. <laughs> save. You want to save before you get to the battle. Because uh, again, if you let, if you trust the auto save, it'll just keep making you redo the battle. You can flee. Now, but that's not ideal. Oh, they're attacking some boars. Okay. Wait, the boars are going to take their side? Let's just see what happens here. These are outlaws, so if we can get one. Take one prisoner. Oh, these are our allies. Okay. All right, got a couple over there. Let's see. There's the main person that we're trying to kill. First person is going to be that one. Okay, they're not going to be able to reach him. There. Nope, still can't reach though. So. Let's. See. Probably still the best move. Da, 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 da. My spear man. Spear woman. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Ooh, this is a bit dicey. Let's try it here. Let's go ahead and use my points too to Can I get all three? Sometimes you can get all three to take damage. That's a pretty good round. Oh, it slowed him down. Where did that slowdown come from? Apply a slowdown for one round. That's good. Probably won't make too big of a difference because those guys aren't going to be moving that far anyway. <laughs> Man, that was quite the arrow. I think he's going to go for my wolf. Now you see, these, these animals are just so hard to keep alive. They really are. Even if you just bone up on nothing but constitution, they just basically cannon fodder. The only one that's not like that's the bear. At least that I've been able to find. So even this battle might be a bit tricky. Oh. Oh. Gotta get better armor. Oh no! Jeez, I think I'm gonna lose this battle too. If I do lose this, I'm gonna reload it because I think we can win this. Just careful. Okay. Come on. Oof. Need to get started getting some critical hits. Now 
there's somebody I could take prisoner. Let's see, get. It's only 64% chance. Ah, oh, missed. I wonder if that means I also lost my uh, machine. Hope not. Still use that bow up close, but next, next time. No, he's gonna die if he goes next. This probably isn't gonna make any difference, but I'll try to heal him. gonna get dying. Hopefully he won't get bleeding on top of that. Oh, you son of a... Yeah, I killed him, but I don't think it's gonna make any difference. Yeah. Sorry. Gotta restart. <laughs> Expect to do this many, many times. Again, imagine playing this on Iron Man mode and just saying, well, okay, I'll lose that guy. Place them. And now that you know a little bit more about how this is gonna play, play out. One thing we could do is move all of our stuff to one side. Let these pigs take care of that stuff. These are just allies anyway. Okay. Probably a little better strategy here. I won't move. I won't charge in this time. Yeah, this way these guys will attack the boars first and hopefully buy me some time to take care of this group over here. And I can move over and concentrate on them. Yeah, the poison is just... Such a terrible thing. Let's go ahead and use that. <laughs> yeah, let's break out all the strategies. Man, I love to kill this poacher before they get a shot, but I just don't think it's gonna happen. He's engaged in combat, so he should get a. Yep, got a valor point. Thank you. Oh, I can't quite reach him. I'm not gonna worry about taking prisoners until we get this battle a little better under control. God! Ooh, that thing does a lot of damage. Of course, I just can never seem to land a crit. Damn, we got our pitchfork guy. Might possibly be able to reach. No, but at least we can get rid of that poison on him. All right, I think we'll probably go down to poison. Oh, still got one point left. There's our wolf. Come on, do something. <laughs> Good. Okay, I want to use one point to get rid of that poison on him. Let's see, can I? Looks like I can't quite. Wait, I think I saw it there for a second. There we go. Okay, that did some respectable damage. Woo, this is a tough fight. Oh, and he got poisoned again? How'd he get poisoned again? Man, even attacking these things gets you poisoned. I can take him one down. And we got our main person there. I just freaking hate that poison mechanic. I really... If I could change one thing about this game, it would be get rid of that. The bleeding. It is way OP. It just sucks the fun out of it, you know? It just turns everything into just worrying about poison. See, this guy's got five poison on him, so, you know, next turn he's dead no matter what. Just had to hope I can maybe do enough damage to make him retreat. I just killed this leader. Alright, 
got him dead. They might retreat soon. Probably not quick enough. Okay. All of that poison. Thing is, I'm so far away, I'm probably not going to be able to reach these guys in time. Ah, there we go. Whew. <laughs> so, again, suboptimal. Uh, but since my guys are going to die, I have to say, okay, let them flee. And I'll get rid of those. Otherwise, the stupid poison thing is going to kill them. So, let's see. Here, oh. Yeah, but I... I I just the the thing about the poisoning and the bleeding, it just it really bothered me the, the whole time I planned this. I really wish they had done something differently. Either dumb it down so it doesn't do quite so much damage, or give you more ways to get rid of it, or just something because it, otherwise, every I mean, just throw your strategies and tactics out the window. There's this poison. You know what? What's fun is that? Every time you hit multiple enemies. You know, this is a... Uh, uh, you, you can get weapons uh, for the Brute that do like area of attacks. That would be perfect for this. And again, probably not as common as being engaged in combat. So. Yeah, I think I will bump up his constitution. Because I really need a tank. <laughs> Somebody that can take a hit. Oh, oh, thank God. Looks like I got some better armor. All right, that's light armor, but it's probably going to be better than anything I got at the moment. Yeah, lots of perks. So I'll put that on him. I need to make some armor layers at some point. There we go. Let's see. That's better. Go ahead and put that on my uh, prisoner. Good soldier. Yeah, they need an axe. I, think, I don't know if that's an axe. It must be an axe. It actually worked out pretty well if we keep them from running away. Alright, so we got that award. You know, the problem is, though, we, we didn't get our prisoners. So that kind of stinks, but... At least we didn't die. Uh, that's a free leather. That's somebody else looks like we need to conquer. Now let's see. I would love to get ambush on him. Let's see if we can ambush him. Let's see. Can I get ambush? Come on, ambush. Ambush. I don't know. Did it hold up? Nope. I guess you gotta wait till they get closer to the trees. Wait. Help requested. Desperate refugees. I guess we do fight them. I don't know if these would be considered outlaws though for the purpose of taking a prisoner. Let's see. Where are they? Poacher. A hoodlum? I could probably, uh, that sounds like so hopefully we'll be able to take some prisoners. Yeah, I don't want you there. I oh, got this mud everywhere. That's suboptimal. Let's see. This will be okay as long as I'm moving quick. That guy's gonna go first. Put him this way so I can easily get behind him. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Probably there. You know, as I say later on, they'll get this really cool. I think it's called Sentinel ability. Prisoner. Only 55% chance, but we're good. That's somebody we could turn in for a bounty. Make a little extra gold. That's what you get for all that stupid poison. Dr. 
armor off. Probably go there. Come on, wolf. Nice. I hope my wolf can cause bleeding. <laughs> now, I won't be able to capture her because she's the, well, the the boss, I guess. Hopefully, I'll be able to capture that. Good thing I got out of that lightning. Trying to think of how I can do enough damage to this guy to maybe possibly capture him as well. Hell, it sucks. You can't. Why can't I use first aid on myself? Oh no! See, he's not engaged, so so you can't capture him if they're not engaged. I'm afraid. So. Just have to kill. But we did get the one, so that worked out. Looks like we got another dagger here. Probably should just start selling those. Got kind of a ranger. Yeah, so let's see. Cutthroat, light armor. These are all light armor. Yeah, I could become a professional poisoner. This is actually really cool. It's okay with me poisoning other people. <laughs> well, let's just see what these options are. So Frenzy is like your suit. This is like your, uh, what is this? Cut through it. Frenzy. So this is like a super backstab if I read that, right? Ambush. Cut through it. Or we can, uh, smoke screen. Forces enemies engaged in the area to disengage. They incur an attack of opportunity from their opponent. This could be really neat, you know, you could, uh, maybe they attack somebody you don't want engaged, you could use this and even get a free attack of opportunity out of it, so. Uh, but the poison vial is really nice, because yeah, you don't, for one, you don't have to have, uh, make the poison, you just have it already, just use a valor point. It's really good if you got a big clump of enemies, you can poison them all, so I think I'll go with that. Even though... <laughs> Oh, I do like the sound of that cut through it a lot. Uh, tough call. Okay, then we'll definitely bump up the decks. Okay, then we got a wolf upgrade. These are pretty simple. We just, you know, typically I don't like to put use my uh, influence for an animal because they're just kind of cannon fodder. So just whatever is double. You know, if they survive long enough, I might start making a more serious investment. Okay, I don't think I got any good items out of that. Please, have mercy, good sirs. We didn't attack you to hurt you. Believe me. We only wanted... Please, don't hurt me. It was wrong and we knew it. But we Gossamer execute. so much gold to cross the border that Give we had no money. other choice. We Ooh, have but I get no a, other choice but to a bow out of it. Yeah. I wish it was an option to capture them. Is it worth 200 to get this raider's bow? Just execute. Yeah, well. We'll do the nice you, thing. You offer us passage. I hope that bow is... Not a crappy bow. Let's see. Got a knockback on it. Okay, so I guess that's all right. I guess it's a little better than what I had. <laughs> I didn't like losing 200 crowns, so that stinks. You, know, you never have enough money in this game, which is actually a good thing. Come on, what the? Sometimes this map just goes berserk. Right. I want to go back to the jail, turn over my prisoner before I have to feed him. That would be the ideal. Get this compendium again. Do I have a 
saddlebags. Whip! <laughs> yeah, I should contend damn points until we get back to camp or town. Yeah, you get used to that fatter uh, run bar. Get buffed up. Be careful how I approach this prison because it's a little island, basically. Oh, I'm gonna have to camp. Crap. Well, this means this prisoner's got yet another chance to escape. I got two prisoners that might escape on me. I guess as long as they're there, I might as well make them uh, study that. Come a scholar. Uh, do I have scholar here? Maybe they can't scholar yet. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to have a scholar. I forget. Maybe you have to build a lectern before you can. Uh, have lectern. Lectern. Workshop. Workshop. Whip camp chest. <coughs> yeah, I don't see lectern. I'm not sure what you have to do to make the lectern. I'm not here already. Let's go ahead and make a cooking pot. Okay, now we can put the cooking pot out there somewhere. Nice. You have new recipes. Put this guy up. Make him a cook. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe you have to have the the item made first. Can make some bread. I don't know. It says if you assign a cook, then the troops daily food consumption is reduced by two. So that works. I put the pony over there just in case that does some good. <laughs> I doubt it, but... <laughs> okay, now we have some bread. Cider. Some of those corpses. No, actually, what do I have? I don't have any salt, so I can't make anything anyway. I'm probably gonna have to eat everything we got. Would have been nice to get back to that prison before. Wolf, unlock the trait altruistic. What is that there? Increases the chance of recruiting a nearby prisoner. Oh, that's kind of neat. So if I leave the wolf next to him, it uh, makes people trust him more, I guess. Really. It speeds up the, the uh, what you call it, recruitment process. You know, I'm just, I've played this game a lot, and there's still just a bunch of little things uh, that I haven't seen before. Go ahead and do some fishing. Now I'm going to need some more food. It's much better if you can cook the food. But you have to learn the recipes. <laughs> Gotta catch them all. I'm still getting achievements. This fishing game more fun than in WoW. I mean, in WoW you're just sitting there, you know, just just waiting to click. Uh, with this, you actually have something to do. You have to be careful with how you hold the mouse down. It's just a little thing, but it's it's more interesting. Makes it more fun. Okay, and we can turn that prisoner over. Lady Mayoness has offered a reward. Five crowns. Of course, we'll lose the cook. So it's a question of, uh, do you want to look 55 gold worth losing your cook? Well, let's see. A hoodlum that looks like they use a sword. Maybe that's a dagger. Why can't they use the dagger? 
Maybe that's is a sword. I don't know. But you know, if you needed this cook badly enough, you could just keep this prisoner, and eventually, I guess they would become a, a part of your party. But I'm just gonna hand them over. <laughs> I don't really like the idea of somebody that tried to kill me being a. Even though his name is Rayot, that's pretty cool. Thanks for contributing. Yeah, I love him more where he came from. So. Nice. Still got one chain. Probably wouldn't hurt to have a backup chain, but kind of low on funds. So. Sell these. Uh, I'll hold on to that dagger. Sell the rest of the stuff. Okay. Let's see, is this guy worth recruiting? I don't want to die here. Oh, a pugilist! This is a really solid addition. They do a lot of damage. Really good to have. Go ahead and recruit him. I think I have enough cash. <laughs> these companions keep downing everybody I'm hiring. I mean, geez. Uh, these guys are worth it, though. They're really impressive. He's going to be doing a lot of killing. Probably go with that because I know they're good in the fight. And they need a dexterity more than. A... You know, the willpower. I might take that, because he does need to have at least 15 to, uh, to get that little perk where he comes back. He gets down to zero. That could be the difference in reloading a battle or not, so I tend to like that. I don't want to die here. Don't need another soulsman. Right, what was that name of that guy? So we can make him a cook. Alright. That will also raise constitution. Alright. Might as well fish this spot out while we're here. Go back and get our bounties. Maybe even recruit somebody else and round out our professions. I'm not sure what you need for the scholar. There's this thing you build for camp called a lecture. That might not come until later in the game. Same thing for the bard. I need to make a loot. Oh, I can craft better hooks. But for that, I will need bait. For that, I need to fight some rats. But sadly, I don't... Again, I think I just get my butt kicked trying to fight them now. Alright, let's see. I think a good stopping point is probably going to be... Uh, I'm wondering if I'm powerful enough yet to take on that battle we got into earlier. Well, let's just see what we've got. Oh, there's the hunt. You see that uh, corpse down there? Yeah, see, this will make a blood trail. We might be able to survive this, but it's probably going to a tough fight. It's the ghost pack. Very tough uh, animals, basically. Okay, where are we going? Yeah, it's going to take us into those woods there. Ooh. Oh. These are bad. I wish I could capture that alpha wolf as a pet. Six wolves. Yeah, I don't want my new guy next to them. No thanks. Probably my only hope to survive this one is going to be to have them come to me and then use my range as possible. Might have to sacrifice that wolf I've already got. Hopefully not, but we'll see what happens here. There. All right. This is gonna be bad. I have to kill this one before I will be able to 
Let the rest surrender. All right, let's go for it. Might be worth a little bit more damage there. Of course, that did mean disengaging. Well, at least it'll take it a while before those other wolves get to me. So we might actually be able to do this. It's not giving up yet. A couple of critical hits. It sure be nice. Oh man, I need a shield, a better shield, so freaking bad. Already tore through that guy's armor. Alright. Could try the poison, but I'd rather wait till these guys get a little closer, so. Let's see. I will use my. Nope. And go ahead and heal him up a little bit, I guess. Getting hurt. And he gets points. Ooh, when these guys get in there, it's gonna be bad. Let's see if I can finish this wolf off. Yeah. One down. Let's go ahead and get our protection going. Okay. Bye bye, Mr. Wolf. <laughs> it's nice knowing you. Let's see, that Pugilus. No, this guy's not engaged, but I'll move him over here so my archer can get a good shot at him. Now, the thing about these uh, Pugilus, or Pugilus, however you say that, uh, they have these two stances, offense and defense. And there's a little challenge that takes place every time, and if you meet the challenge, you get a full reward. Or maybe I don't have that yet. <laughs> So I, maybe I could just attack. Uh, I remember before it would say if you do uh, your defensive stance, you'll get a challenge. Get a little reward. Okay. That will disengage him. Still up. Dang, I hate it. There's two points left. Bleeding. If I could control that wolf, I would try to get more. Probably have him out of combat. Maybe make something bleed, run away. Make something else bleed, run away. Gonna you know, do it like that. All right, one down. Around this. Supported status. Okay. Still up. Go ahead and kill him, I think. I'm trying to get that morale bar up a little higher. Okay, this is going to be really a question of how much I'm able to do with this archer. Let's see if yeah, he can reach. Quite kill that guy. Oh, now the big baddie's on my wolf. <laughs> yep. Suboptimal. There's a shield guy. With the... This guy hasn't been attacked yet. I'll go ahead and get him into position. At least he has some armor left. Ooh, these are bad. Bad wolves. This one might die just from the bleeding. Yep. Nope. And I'm galvanized. I might actually be able to, to do this. Let's see. Now let's try this poison vial. So you can see I could poison both of them for four. Not insignificant, but. Okay, I got a backstab in there. Oh, yay! Critical hit! Oh, maybe. Just maybe we can do this. Now, I won't be able to uh, 
capture this this name. Out of the way. Don't forget to move him out of the way so your archer won't have a defeated shot. Oh, uh, well, my wolf is dead, but sometimes you gotta make sacrifices. Oh, so oh oh, wrath wrath. Got it. <laughs> That's how you do it. Oh, look, the wolf corpse. Oh, I don't even have enough materials to repair. Okay, so this is pretty cool. So one thing you could do is become a beast master. And this will let you... Uh... Oh, am I thinking of something else? Yeah, beast mastery. I guess it's later on. Uh... But you can control the animals in combat. This this gives you some of those perks. If you see the like your wolf is attacking something, you, you can hit that enemy with your bow, and then the wolf will get free attack on it. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't find it nearly as useful as some of these other abilities here. I mean, the hunter is basically a free shot. I don't know how you go wrong with that one. And again, when you think that you're going to be getting a free Valor point every time you kill somebody. Not engaged in combat. This would be good for a, uh, a uh, Spearman. The hunt has begun. Alright, so I can turn that hunt, hunting quest in. Here's that battle. Let's go turn this in, see if I can get any kind of upgrade. You know, it's getting close to three hours. <laughs> God, time flies. So I might just uh, turn this in. I'll show you my other game, because I wanted to show you some of the later game content. I haven't even showed you the rat infestation. I guess I could show it to you, you know, it might not survive, but at least you could see it. It's really well done, I think. I've done a really good job with rats in this game. A lot of games, the rats are just there as kind of your starting thing to kill. And they lose relevance relatively quickly, but by the way they set it up in this game, there's always a reason to go killing rats. Supposed to rest. I can see my little camping icon. Okay, let's see. Uh, didn't I make him a cook? Put him, on the, put him over there. Oh, I lost my wolf. That is so sad. So, so sad. Let's see. Do I have anything? I, I don't think I got any salt. I can't cook anything without salt. It's really limited. Have to eat raw fish. <laughs> yeah, at least you can have some beer to wash, the, wash, the, wash, the, wash that carcass down. Yeah, at least nobody tried to get away. Got a few uh, raw materials. There we go. They're able to repair everything. That's nice. Man, these are some lean mercenaries at the moment. Okay. Can't chop wood yet. But we did do the interesting. hunt. Very interesting. To survive our hunts. Besides protecting oh, good. the you're gonna give me some the armor layers. layers. Yeah. Thank you. Take this armor. The Brotherhood operates throughout the land. But... So they gave me the recipe. Oh, I had to have an experienced blacksmith to make it. That's okay. How many fangs? I got 45 fangs. Don't even bother trying to sell me your no, filth. No, not anywhere I'm nearly in enough. Fangs to accompany. <laughs> I don't have this wolf's body. Uh, but that, I'll just show you this. I probably wouldn't do this ordinarily. 
Uh, but you see, I since I can find the best armor I got basically, which is probably this one. And I can put this. Oh, wait, where is it? There we go. Oh, it's got to be level six armor. Okay, so it's going to be a long time until I can use it. But uh, basically, it's a way to boost your the power of your armor and customize it. Where was I going? Oh, I need to turn that back. Yeah, so there you go. That's a pretty good shot, I think, at your starting uh, start of the game. Now, there's a lot we haven't covered here, uh, but rather than try to get there through the starting party, I think I will stop and reload my late game. And then you can see all the fun stuff you're working towards. And still leave a little bit of surprises there for you. And so I will be back momentarily, but for you, almost as... All right, back in. Let's see. Hopefully it delete my old save game. Yeah, old game. Good. The old game. There we go. <laughs> I just noticed there's a little wrinkle in my screen there. Uh, run away, back there. <laughs> okay, let's see, where were we? Uh, okay, this is my advanced group. <laughs> you can see a little bit left to do. <clears throat> no, I was thinking, oh, this is the rat. Yeah, I'm going to show you the rats. And then I might uh, zip over and see if I can show you the ship. A little sense of what that expansion is like. You know, at this point in this game, I pretty much got everything I could out of the compendium. So it feels like a, a good spot to quit, and it did give me the chance to roll the credits. <coughs> Rats infestation. <laughs> so why uh, do I like the rats so much in this game? Well, you know, I happen to like killing rats, and this game satisfies that craving. Uh, but it's also um, stays relevant throughout the game because you need to come in here and uh, kill these uh, plague-infested outgrowths to get—I forget what they call it—but uh, this thing that you need to make all your oils. For your weapon enchantments, your weapon enhancements, amongst other things, and you can't replace those. I mean, you can't take them off and put them on another weapon, so you, there's pretty much a constant need to have those oils available. So it gives you a reason to keep doing the rat battles. Now, the strategy here is this brood mother, every time it's her turn, she's going to summon a bunch more rats. <laughs> Uh, so you probably don't want to kill her off right away, because uh, you want to gonna get as many of these uh, plague outgrowths as you can before eventually the poisoning and all those other sorts of effects uh, uh, kills you. Now at this point of the game, I do have characters that are immune to poison. Thank God. Uh, the only ones that seem to be able to do it are the swordsmen. Uh, they have this ability called hardcore training. Uh, so instead of uh, taking damage from bleeding, poison, and burning, they actually can get rage. Actually, do bonus damage depending on how much poisoning they have. So it turns that liability into a big asset. So that is a really good reason, I think, to have uh, maybe all swords, but you know, not even have any of the other classes. But you know, I'm a little bit facetious because there is a, a type of belt you can get, a little belt accessory that not the one I wanted to show you. I don't know if I have one to show you uh, handy here, but there is a belt accessory you can get that will uh, make you immune to poison. There's another one for bleeding. You can't be immune to all of it, at least as far as I've been able to find. Uh, but yeah, it's a recurring problem, and I, again, I think it's one of the stupidest things, maybe my only real gripe about the game, uh, because it eliminates, you know, you know, even if you have a character with a thousand hit points, like my bear, yeah, this bear here. <laughs> you know, it gets hit with enough stacks of poisons and bleeding, and, you know, they've got like two rounds before they die. It's just super stupid. 
I've had to reload so many times because of that. <clears throat> but, okay, anyway, on to this. So what you want to do, since this has a poison cloud around it, because of course it does, <laughs> uh, fire damage taken increased by 50%. I guess if you had flaming arrows, you could really uh, go to town with this. But uh, we could just hit it with arrows, or you can bring one of your characters that has the immunity to poison in there and uh, deal with it that way. But yeah, this is going to be pretty awesome. Let's see if I have a character with some good uh, ranged attacks here. Uh, I don't think any of these characters do. Yeah, Kalen does. But yeah, check him out. He gets three attacks of that. He's got a legendary uh, weapon. If you defeat certain bosses in the game, or you do certain uh, artifact missions uh, with those lost tombs or whatever they call them, solve some puzzles, adventure game style. It's really fun. Maybe <laughs> wish I could show you one of those. I might be able to. Now, uh, but you get these super weapons called legendaries, and then you can take these to certain places or to a uh, forge and actually upgrade these. And so you can keep the abilities that are on them and you know just level them up along with your characters. So that's a really cool feature. I mean this guy could just go to town with these little rats. But we don't want to waste all our points on that. Because again, uh, what we're trying to do here is get these uh, uh, plague infested growths. These little rats don't do too much damage, but they do pile up. Let me see. Derek, sorry, taking his turn. This is one that has the uh, the immunity to poison. A long ways away from the <laughs> three hundred. Did you see that? Three hundred points of damage. How awesome is this? Got a legendary weapon and a dexterity of one hundred and twenty-six. So yeah. Uh, critical hits, 56%. So I'm, I, I've created a beast. <laughs> oh, I love this. Uh... You know, even some of my archers even have a thing where even if they are attacked directly. Yeah, see, she's got the animal. She's got animal affinity, so she gets a lot of the perks from my animals. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, yeah, here it is. So even if somebody does attack her in melee. She's got a 50% chance to um, attack him with an attack of opportunity, which usually kills him. And 300 points worth of damage. Okay, so character. Whose turn is it? Yeah, she's still got her movement. So we got to try to find where those... They're usually a long ways away, right, of course. Of course they are. So you have to run to them, and meanwhile the rat mother's just popping out more and more... Rat pups. Squeak, squeak. Oh, this is one of my. Uh, so this guy was a prisoner. I picked up and was low level, just uh, level five. But you know, after a while, you're just like, why not? You know, just for role play value. Get a couple of new recruits in there. <clears throat> I got so many things in my camp right now, you wouldn't believe. So I can support a pretty large staff. Now see, here's where being able to swap out weapons comes in handy. Now you have to have, uh, I don't know if it'll let me show you this, but uh, you can get a skill that'll let you swap out weapons. So this guy has an axe that's good for a single target, but I can switch to a different axe that does a ranged, or does an AOE, see? So with this, I can hit multiple targets. So I think it's pretty neat being able to swap weapons. You know, you wish you could get that on every character, but sometimes, you know, they give me some other options that are just so darn good, too. It's like, hmm, which do I want more? You know, this gives everybody a 30% damage boost for three rounds. You know, I didn't even mention that, but uh, there's these skill books you can buy. Uh, they cost a lot of money, but you can usually boost one of your skills, make it do uh, not just more points of damage or something like that, but actually add another little feature to it. So it's just a really fun thing. There's always, almost always, something else you could do to make your characters just that little bit more 
bad. Okay. I get a little distracted by these rats, but what I really want to do is, is these, uh, these little columns now. Unfortunately, some of these characters will get poisoned. I'm trying to avoid it, but sometimes you can't. <clears throat> Ideally, you would just have uh, characters that are immune to poison taking out those. Let's see. This is kind of a fun ability. Challenging Shout. I didn't really get as much use out of it as I thought I would. But what it does, it makes them all kind of gather around you. And then you can use the area attack a little bit more successfully. Now, this one's got a. I got a couple that got married. Yeah, a couple. So your characters will actually fall in love and, and get married after a while. She's got this really badass um, axe. So what it does, you attack once and then it'll do the same amount of damage on their next, when they take a turn. Let's see, there's another one up there. And these guys are kind of interesting. These are my rogues, but I found these legendary offhand weapons. Which, you don't lose these. I don't think there's a way to throw them like you can with a regular uh, offhand, but I think what it does is give you an extra little attack. I'm not going to be able to get close enough to that anyway. But I think that dual weapon would have been a good idea to put on all my rogues. Because you know, I think as you saw in my other game, some of the daggers have an area effect. Uh, but it'd be nice to be able to switch back and forth between that. Or maybe you have one blade that's coated in poison, so you can poison them and then switch to the other weapon, and maybe that's a bleed weapon. Or maybe, you know, there's so many things you could do with that. Okay, so this is my other spearman. They got a spear wall they could use. I don't think I've got this perked up, but if you buff this up, you can get two or three enemies if they come at you, and will automatically attack them. It'd be really nice if you set up with another character. Now, this is another one that has the uh, poison immunity. Uh, I've been in surrounded. Yeah, here's I could show you. You know, just because we don't, I'm not really playing anymore. I'm just showing you stuff. Look at everything I can target with this uh, poison bomb. <laughs> so some are already dying. Now they're, I think this guy's got a thing where if they're poisoned, they get vulnerable. Yeah, he's got this uh, special thing on his hat. <laughs> I wish you could take these off of hats and put them on other hats. So you you don't have to be a man without a hat in this game, because you can swap out these, I think they call them badges. But you have a, if it's poison, it does 25%, he does 25% more damage to it. A pretty much guaranteed uh, kill. <laughs> 200 points of damage. Boom! Here's my hammy. I didn't even talk about the bards, but this thing where if you want your bards to have multiple songs, you have to do uh, special little achievements, basically. And one of them is to kill something like eight things with a pig named Hammy. <laughs> So that's what I did there. Sort of weaken this rude mother a little bit. Let's see. I've only got one of these. I should get at least two before we can quit. Yeah, this is probably not one of the better, better skills I picked up with her. I think it's kind of kind of hard to beat that one that gives you the. Uh, extra weapon that you could swap to. I think that'll be my default if I ever play again. Which I probably will when they do another expansion, but you know they will. Oh, here's another archer. Yeah, this guy was also a prisoner. Poacher. Well, you know, I had a legendary bow laying around I wasn't using, so... I'm like, heck. 
Why not uh, just bring this guy in, train him up with my training dummy? This guy does not have immunity to poison. Not a whole lot of health. I mean, a hundred health points. You can see how quickly that poison would bring him down. Let's see. This is another yet another one of my captured people. There's this thing where if you capture somebody and you want to make a party or a official group, you give them a special belt accessory called a personal cup. <laughs> it's not a not that kind of cup. <laughs> I guess it's like their favorite little uh, drinking cup or something, but uh, for some reason that will make them want to uh, join you more. I mean, let's see if I can do this. This will poison him, but let's do this quickly. Yeah, do you see him throw that hat, hatchet? Yes, he gets a little extra attack with that every turn. Pretty neat. Let's see if we can finish this thing. Oh, see now, the problem here is I'm going to hit my own dudes. So we have to try to figure out how to attack without damage in a row of people. You know, I'm just gonna finish this whole thing. She should die here momentarily. I think I could condemn her. Ah, look at that. And she'll definitely die when it's her turn because she's got all that poison on her. And you see, he gets an automatic attack of opportunity with that spear. Actually, is it maybe the hat? Yeah, I put the thing on his hat too, so if anybody attacks him, he gets to attack him with this <laughs> Liberator <laughs> Blake 7 weapon. So, yeah, I'm really, really happy with the way this group turned out, especially once you start getting all these legendary weapons on everybody. It's pretty incredible. See that? They could even make these things bleed. Nice thing about him is I don't, you know, if somebody attacks him, he'll still get his attack. It's not to worry so much about missing that little opportunity there. Uh, this one has, I think, a belt attachment. Yeah, Narcissus net. So they can always capture an animal. Now, yes, I've had a bunch of plague rats in my party. Uh, but the problem with them is they're very weak, unfortunately. They will find cheese for you, which is cool, but it's just so hard keeping them alive. That's the problem. There is a couple different kinds of rats you can get. Let's just finish this up. A little bit hard to see sometimes. Well, I don't have can capture one. There we go. We've got a little rat we can play with. See, I can throw this poison down again. <laughs> now they got. They're definitely going to be dead now. This poison makes them vulnerable as well. It'll take more damage if they get stuck. Boom! 367 points of damage. Boom! Didn't even have to use my action point for that. Okay, got one. Let's try to see if we get this one. Really in range. Oh, come on, I got one more shot. Oh, yeah. So, ordinarily, I would want to get every single rat nest so I get the most uh, rewards for this mission, but let's just finish her up, I think. It'll definitely be over when that rat takes its turn. Let's see what's going on here. This is my. You can only attack the one you're engaged with. Yeah, I don't want to attack. Now I could disengage. I get attacked a couple times, but now I can reposition. Sometimes it's worth it, you know, just to get a better angle. 
when you get an attack of opportunity like that, it's just the one that you're engaged with. Now I got some bait for my fish hooks. I got these plague ridden samples from my alchemy. And look at this, I even upgrade my main guy here. He's the, we didn't even talk about the captains, but you can give ranks to your some of your men too. Kind of like a captain and a couple of lieutenants, depending, I think, on how large your your force is. And then you get these uh, class specializations. Now, so what I like about this, you could take this one and knock everybody back. Or you could take this one here. And now you can go back and pick one of these other options you didn't get to before. Now think of second weapons. Uh, a must. Even though I don't have a really good backup mace for him yet. You know, since his uh, weapon does an area attack, it would be nice to have another weapon that was just a single target. I could coat that with different poisons. Yeah, so there you go. Let's see if we can get down there to that ship. I haven't really played around with the ship. I had plenty enough to do. <laughs> I just doing these uh, early missions and clean, cleaning out all these zones. I mean, look at this world map. We've got all of these regions, I guess, to conquer. There's not really the right word. You know, explore and do the story missions. If you completely do all the story missions, you get a nice, a nice perk. Okay, so what I want to do, I'll take my... Yeah, looking good there. So we can go to the travel post. And every now and then, if you, again, if you clean out an entire region, you do all the, all the story quests, you can build a travel post and even interconnect them with a trade, uh, trading uh, route. And then you can do cool stuff like store weapons and instantly get them. Uh, or you can buy things that are otherwise you have to go all the way to that other region to buy. You won't be disappointed but now you can just buy it for one Thanks convenient. To the trade. Vinda. But you can also fast travel. The result is quite satisfying. Everything is ready for you. Is there somewhere you would well, like we to go? Travel down to Tiltron. And we'll have to pay our men. Uh, I have to feed them. But, uh, see, see all the fun dishes. I got eel soup. I've got rat stew. Surfing a turf. You know, lots of lots off. Yeah, throw a carcass in there. Why not? <laughs> Dried meat. So you can see I've got quite a bit of options here. Try to make my dinner. And then this way will just instantly appear there. Boom, ready to go. <clears throat> and there we are in Tiltr. Let's go down and have a look at this boat. Again, I haven't really played around with that. But I think if you were going to buy this game, you might be wondering, should I go ahead and buy the, the full version with the expansion? <laughs> Look, there's a rat. <laughs> Plague rat. He looks good, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, I like the... You can find cheese. Don't ever pick that one. It's messed up. Yeah, there are a few bugs and glitches in the game. For some reason, this, uh, this is supposed to summon another rat. But it doesn't seem to play nice with my Beastmaster. So it just keeps going back to the rat over and over again. I can't uh, get through the battle. So I just don't take this call to the swarm. Yeah, definitely take that. And then again, uh, I don't... I wouldn't advise wasting all your influence. Just uh, whatever gets the double points. Probably the best choice. These guys aren't going to live for long. Unless you really try hard to uh, keep them alive, keep them out of danger. Enemies just go straight for him without fail. So I just gave up trying to, you know, keep those guys alive. 
You can always get more. <clears throat> it's really not fun having to reload a battle just because a little rat died. You see, my pig finds mushrooms when we're in the woods, and my rat will find cheese when we go inside someplace. My bears will find fish. I'll show you how a python works. So instead of having to go all the way back around that mountain, I can just throw a python down and boom. Oh, look, there's a little chest there. Oh, I don't think I should have put it there. Yeah. <laughs> I got stuck here a while ago, too. Yeah, you see that fog? That's where those ghost, uh, ghost wolves are. It's about a good place to get ghost carcasses and ghost leather. There's certain weapons and items that require that kind of a special uh, component. But I want to look at the boat. All right, board the boat. Hoist the sails, board the boat. Oh, I thought I had an item for a boat here somewhere. Let's see if I can find that again. Man, I got like six horses to help me carry all this stuff. Uh, how do I put this on? We have to equip my... <laughs> the ship is not equipped with the ballista. Again, I'm just kind of figuring this out. I haven't spent any time with this yet. It requires anger. Okay. Well, I have an angler. Which one's my angler? Well, I do have an angler, right? I'm accidentally... Let's see... There we go. Hull. Okay. How do I upgrade this? I guess I could learn. <laughs> I did want to learn. There we go. I guess we're off. Lower the sails, oars out. Oh, I guess it's taking wind into consideration. Ah, fun. She reminds me a lot of pirates, sir. Wasn't uh, Pillars of Eternity 2 the dead cells or something? That has the ship. Yeah, it looks like the wind is going against me here. Oh, this is really interesting. So I guess you can access parts of the map that you couldn't before. Going around Archipelago. Oh, looks like something. Oh, if you hold the shift key down, they, they row. What was that? It's like new stuff, new kinds of items. Oh, what's this? I'm probably going to get crushed because I have not done any ship stuff. Oh, Mercenaries, this way! <laughs> I play We've got to protect the Edoranian ambassador from these pirates. pirates? Now, now, Captain. We are but humble merchants, protecting our businesses from new taxes. You'd rather kill an ambassador than pay your taxes? And you dare to claim you've nothing to do with pirates? Unlike pirates, we pay very handsomely, <laughs> mercenaries. And if we sink the... Oh, cool. Once again, we can decide if we want to side with the law or with the pirates. <clears throat> I don't know if I go through this, this whole battle, but... But yeah, this looks like a really solid expansion already. I mean, new types of reagents, probably new recipes. I noticed there's a whole ship uh, upgrade tier uh, as well. Uh, so I think there's plenty enough in the original game to keep you interested. 
you know, it's well worth the price of admission, but you know, it looks like a pretty solid expansion on top of that. It's not very expensive either. So I'd probably go ahead and buy the expansion while you're at it. I think it gives you another couple of levels as well. Yeah. The thing I thought I'd show you. If I can uh, figure out how to get to it. Uh, but I really like what they did with the bard. I got those little pirate shanties stuck in my head now. I love a good pirate shanty. Let's see if I can do it here. So if you go to the tavern and you have yourself a loot. I don't know if I'm allowed to rent room. Oh, except for this stupid one. Yeah, this is the one town I won't be able to do this, but I can go to a, uh, a different town real quick. Back to the trade post. The result is everything. Oh, is there somewhere you would like? Let's just go to the closest one. Don't really caring what I feed these guys, whatever. <laughs> okay, fabulous. Now these are all these uh, armor layers you can put on your armor. All these different types of belt accessories, belt buckles, and things. Okay. Tap. So we should have the option I'm to see. The there we go. You got a couple of bards at this point. Really the main one. So I've got three songs unlocked. It's really challenging to get these unlocked, but. Uh, it's kind of fun too, because once you have done the achievement, you, you get one that called these names. <laughs> Gotta re remember what you had to do to get it. Oh, you see, it's. Oh, missed one. You know, it's probably harder than it looks. If we can get all of it done, we get a standing ovation. song, you know, kind of a little diversion. And it pays pretty well. 130 sapphire. I get some uh, more progress. So, yeah. Let's take a look at the camp and I'll show you all the different stuff you can get eventually. And this isn't even all the stuff. You got a tanning rack here. You can take all these different types of leather and either make leather or if you have uh, ghost carcasses from those ghost creatures, they can make a special ghost leather. <laughs> the workshop, you can make all sorts of stuff. Collars and hooks and belt buckles, torches. Oh, I didn't show you the... You know, one big part of the game I'm probably not going to be able to show you because I've already done it, is the... I'll see if I have a save, perhaps. Uh, but there's a really well done uh, dungeon crawler like aspect built into this where you're uh, solving puzzles and things as part of the uh, tombs. Yeah, meat drying racks. So here we could put those carcasses on and get some dried meat and some grease. These are upgradable too. Like this, if you get the first version of this meat drying rack, it's very limited. Uh, but as you upgrade it, spending your points here in Bendium, uh, you can make it where it can work with fish, give you fish oil, or meat, or meat oil. So most of these things can be upgraded. Yeah, and the gurney there is really useful. I, I keep forgetting I have this stupid thing. Uh, but if you get some injured party members, instead of putting using medicine, uh, you can just put them in this gurney overnight. And that'll take care of their, their wounds for you, so you can save the money. Or save the resources for that. You can even make honey. <laughs> and your, uh, your pets can have abilities like... Uh, let's see if this guy has it. Yeah, I think it's there. Nope. Uh, maybe this one doesn't have it. Oh, I thought I had it on this guy. Uh, but anyway, some of my pets have a thing where if they sleep next to a human, 
It gives them a happiness boost. I think it's kind of fun. Again, it's just kind of fun to think about that. Uh, do I have a... Where's that rat at? Oh, I think that was a different safe game. Never mind. Yeah, I got another prisoner here. I forget what I was doing with him. Heldentos. I think I was going to assign him to a station. But, like, here's a little training dummy you can get. So when you do recruit somebody new, they might come into a low level. And so you can make them work at this training dummy, and they'll level up pretty quick with that. I'm going to use my pig that has the... Nimble. I don't know. <laughs> I could have sworn I had an animal that would give you a happiness boost, but maybe I'm just making stuff up. Yeah, and here's the lectern where you can uh, manage these sort of riddle books, basically. Research artifacts, and you sell them, or sometimes they're legendary weapons. I mean, there is a lot to this game. And I have more ponies than I know what to do with. Just look at all these recipes, too. A lot of these have really cool, like, multiple perks. Like, this one gives you run speed, purchase price of trade. Oh, this is what I was going to show you. Uh, so this little banner flag here, right? Now, this is how you can use... I, I didn't know about this. I was playing this game for days before I realized this was a thing. But you can spend your influence uh, to get these temporary bonuses. Like more carrying capacity. When you collect a resource, you get an extra one. You get more experience points after a battle, and so on and so forth. But you know, you could uh, spend a lot of uh, uh, these influence points this way. So I was wondering why I had like you know five or six thousand of these val uh, influence points. <laughs> it's because you know I totally didn't realize I should be using them uh, here. Like pars parsnip league. <laughs> Yeah, I got a lot of cool perks built up over the course of this game, as you can imagine. Okay, let's uh, see. I'll see if I got a save game around one of those tombs. Do I? There's one that says tomb. <laughs> I don't know. I tend to be slipshod with my naming. But it is a major point of the game. It's certainly one of the more fun components. I really look forward to every zone. Yeah, here we go. I get into these. And so you can see this is using torches, so you don't want to run out of torch light. It's not real time, but basically uh, going to the different rooms will use up a certain amount of your torches. Torch light. I guess your torches are burning out gradually. You can find little treasures in here. Like, this is one of those things you can put on the lectern and research and get an item. Uh, the codexes will lead you to these things called sepulchers, once you get a set of them. And it's basically just a really awesome treasure. Usually, it's usually a big enough treasure to do some real... to really boost... This woman was eaten by something. You know, it's typically a really cool item. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but yeah, it's, it's well worth it. <laughs> you know, every time you get one, you're like, wow, I wish I had had this you know, way earlier in the game. So again, I don't want to spoil anything for you here because a lot of this you need to play yourself and, uh, you know, and figure it out. But there's special battles you fight in these things where it's dark. I don't know if we'll get to one of those. But it's kind of like mist, I guess, or ribbon. You know, there'll be these, you know, little symbols you have to find. Sometimes it can be really hard. You have to really search everywhere to find that symbol. Remember <laughs> the bucket in the well? <laughs> yeah, what does that remind you of? Inspect it. Let's see. Who's got a really good dexterity? Probably mine. She can do it. No. Nope. <laughs> to go to a battle. I'm not sure if that's just a just a joke or what. I wasn't able ever to you know to get whatever's in the bucket. I, I don't know if it's a strength check or dexterity check or what. 
But yeah, here again, you can see everybody's in the dark. Now, I could equip a torch, and I guess that would expand my, my vision. But now, what's going to happen here, you have to kind of wander around until you see where the enemies are. Maybe there's a mole rat. Not to be confused with a mole rat. Huh. As long as the unit moves in darkness. Nimbling. Yeah, so these uh, passive skills wouldn't be all that useful for the character. Action, attack, stance. Yeah, see, they got a challenge attack stance. So they'll have challenges. This is the Pugilist again. So I'm in the right stance, so I should be. Bonuses and bonuses. Uh, I didn't see what the challenge was. You know, some usually get some kind of perk. Straight for Hammy. Oh. Hey! Oh, it's still surviving. Look at all the Valor points I have now. And this isn't even my party maxed out. I think these guys are only level 10. I you know, like level 12 and 13 on the other one. But yeah, you know, take a look at this. Toxic Blade, Poisonous Oils. So every time I hit something with this, it's getting a lot of effects on it. I really like these oils you can put on things. So the blade itself consumes all the poisons and does damage. But then on the blade I have infectious oil, 50% chance to apply a status effect affecting damage equal to 50% of the attack. So basically every now and then if I do say 50 points of damage, it'll take 25. <clears throat> then poison of course. One a chance to apply one poison every time it deals damage. So you can imagine putting something like that on somebody that has a bunch of attacks, like that Pugilist goes in, you know, more chances to apply the poison. Uh, but other ones, if you if you only attack once, you might want uh, one of those bleeding effects or something that doesn't stack. Just you know, do you have the ability activated on it or not? And repost, what that means is next time. Uh, this rat that's engaged. If it attacks uh, Janellus here, Janellus will get a free counter attack. I think we'll be able to take it out. <laughs> yeah, I think her weapon will. It goes around a circle, which is another good candidate for that dual weapon. So I don't have to. You know, sometimes you got allies around you, you don't want to attack them as well. But she's got the destabilize. You see? Just that destabilize alone will kill that rat. I still got my. Main attacks, so I'm gonna find some more. And I could have swung in a circle. Oh, well, you know, it's. This little bit's mostly just trying to see where they are. Hope they don't come after your weakest characters. And yeah, do you want to let them go? Yes, we can just let them go. But yeah, I really enjoyed these. These tombs are probably my favorite part of the game. Other than like the combat, of course, and the leveling. Uh, you know, I don't know if I'd go that far, <laughs> uh, but it was a lot of fun. You know, especially again, kind of getting bored with the. Or you want to take a break from combat and you know, all the other aspects of the game, the crafting. It really is fun to explore these tombs. You know, especially early in the game where you've got like limited resources to make torches and things, and those battles are really. Uh, hit or miss. You, know, you get real deep inside one of these. Uh, you know, you get really deep inside one of these dungeons, and you're just, oh my god, am I going to be able to get out of here? Or did I find everything? You need to find all the runes. Every now and then, you'll see a wall, and you have to study the wall to see if you can uh, spot the runes, because you'll need those for your. Uh, uh, to sort out the books and find sepulchers. All right, you know, I could go on and on and on because it's a whole bunch more to this game. I'm just barely scratching the surface here, but I think I've shown you enough at this point. Where this game is is for you, you probably have probably stopped this video <laughs> and downloaded it and have been playing it. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I can't say enough nice things about it. I had a lot of fun with it. You know, it's, it's even fun going back and playing it some more. You know, it's just so much to it. 
and you know, still finding things new, making discoveries after you've played, I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of hours. I'm actually kind of curious. Let's see if I can, how long I've played this. So I played it 113 hours, according to Steve. So 113 hours, and yet there's still a bunch of stuff that I'm learning about, things I haven't seen before, new content. Uh, yeah. Uh, the negatives? You know, I guess the neg one of the big negatives I've already talked about is the, the, the bleeding and the poison are just a real pita. <laughs> you know, you can generally get through it if you're quick with the first aid or if you get those uh, health accessories that will limit it. But, man, I hated having to reload so many times just because of that. That's why I wish they would reduce that somehow so it make it, you know, so make it somehow less obnoxious because that was, it practically ruined uh, swaths of the game for me. Uh, it just got to be so annoying. It sort of overwhelmed all the fun stuff. So I think that's something that shouldn't be too hard for them to, uh, to fix. Uh, you know, I don't know why, like, the swords people are the only ones that can have that ability to nullify the poison. And I would think that every character should have that as an option if they're going to keep it in as is. Uh, but that's really something, it's irritating, but I don't want to just keep harping on that because there's so many things that this game does really well. You know, it's got the heroes of Might and Magic feel when you're exploring, looking for resources. There's all kinds of surprises on the map, stories that go along with each region. you got lots of multiple goals you're working at simultaneously. The crafting system is just a real joy. You know, I love the way that's integrated into the game. You, know, you can make money with it. You can make better gear than you can find with it. Uh, the mini games are... The, the only one I didn't really like was the blacksmithing one because I, I just couldn't get the hang of it. I don't know what the, what the deal is. All the other mini games I was able to eventually get to the point where I could do it perfectly every time. Uh, the blacksmithing one, I don't know if there's just a random factor in there or something, but I just never could consistently make you know, superior quality gear. So that could be on me. Uh, but you know, you don't necessarily have to make perfect gear uh, to make a good profit. Uh, but I like the flexibility, you know, if you want to be a merchant, if you want to be a brigand, you know, there's lots of different ways to play. Uh, I love the being able to take people prisoner and then turning them in for a bounty or actually adding them to your party. That's pretty cool. You know, all the little party personality uh, conflicts and friendships and marriages, really fun for role playing. Just, just you know, real, uh, again, something really fun uh, I loved about this game. Uh, yeah, but probably my favorite thing was just having so many different characters and so many different skills and weapon choices and really having to manage those resources carefully. You know, thinking about, well, uh, do I want to use this iron or this, some of the more rare um, metals to make a better armor, make a better weapon, or do I actually want to use it for uh, other purposes? You know, there's lots of choices like that you're making. And I think it's uh, really good, too, at making you think not just about individual characters, uh, but really thinking about how the characters work with other characters. So you can have strategies that involve, you know, two or three characters working together, uh, working through a particular tactic. Uh, so that was just awesome. <laughs> you know, there's very few games I've played where you know, the Pathfinder games are pretty good at that. You know, the sort of team dynamics, but it was really cool to see it here. Now, I have seen people complain about uh, the uh, scale of the battles. You know, again, if you've got 20 people, including creatures in your party, then you're going to be fighting these huge groups of uh, monsters every time, spread out across a map. It can take a long time, you know, even with everything sped up. Uh, so that does get to be a bit of a pain. Uh, how much, I guess, because I like battles, but you know, if you're the type of person that just wants to get through a battle quickly, uh, my response to that would be, well, maybe you're not really optimizing that fact that if you take out the uh, leader first and focus on, you know, the lieutenants, you know, once you get rid of them, they'll typically surrender uh, relatively quickly, especially if you have good uh, uh, morale. Uh, so just because you see like 20 enemies doesn't mean you're going to have to fight them all. You could just let them go. That's, that's one thing. Another thing, though, is you could go to one of those travel centers, travel plazas, like I was showing you, and send some people out. You know, take some people out of your party, put them on those 
uh, put them in those uh, trading posts, come back for them later. Now that might be good if you're just, again, kind of tired of the scale of the battles. Uh, the way I always looked at it, though, was the, the more enemies, you know, the more resources you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, so if you fight, you, know, you fight 20 boars, you're going to get a lot of pork. You can cook all that pork up and either save it for your guys to eat or uh, sell it. You can sell food, just like you can everything else in the game. So, yeah, lots and lots of fun. I just really love this game. I hope I've been able to convey some of my enthusiasm for it. <laughs> I'd love to get these uh, developers on to talk about it. But, yeah, I, I think this is a really solid choice. If you like XCOM, Heroes, uh, games like uh, uh, Mountain Blade. You know, it's not identical, obviously, to any of those games, but there's just certain elements from each one, I think, that it pulls together into a new package, new configuration. Not perfect, uh, but I don't let uh, that. I wouldn't let that dissuade me. You know, you're still gonna have a really good time, and uh, totally sucked in like I did. <laughs> if you're anything like me. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna stop it here. Uh, that's War Tales. You can pick it up at Steam. Pretty sure it's on GOG as well. Uh, if you do play, let me know what you think. Love to hear from you. Uh, I'm gonna stop it here, and I'll see you on the other side. That's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And I got a lot of great stuff coming up. Some new interviews, uh, more game reviews, you name it. You want it. You let me know what you want to see on the channel. We'll see if we can make it happen. But I can't do it and I won't do it without you. So thank you very, very much for supporting the show. Keeping Matt Chat on the air. I thank you. I need your help. You provide it. You're awesome. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you again. I got infinite gratitude for all of those rat slayers amongst you who have stepped up to the plate uh, like johnny or janny <laughs> j-a-n-i uh, sorry if i'm not getting your name pronounced uh, uh, correctly but thank you uh, regardless of the pronunciation because you are helping to keep matchat on the air uh, so thanks to all the ratrons ratlings rat slaying fiends uh, if you're not one of this august group yet what Oh my god, you're not part of this awesome group. What are you waiting for? Uh, look in the link in the show notes. There's a link to the Patreon site. You can sign up, become a Retron. A couple of bucks a month. You're never going to miss it. You get access to a great Discord channel and lots of fun behind the scenes stuff. And, uh, plus, you'll be supporting something I hope that you like, <laughs> considering you spent you know, three plus hours watching it. So... Uh, thank you again for all your support. It really means a lot to me. Uh, thanks so much. All right. What about that news from the Mad Cave? Oh, Miko. Miko is always good for a news item. Did not disappoint this week. Uh, wrote in about a couple of things. One is Swordhaven Iron Conspiracy. Uh, this is about, um, uh, well, this is a classic party-based RPG. Expla explore the land of Nova Draconia. Embark on quests unique to your character. Discover mysterious artifacts. Unravel a hidden conspiracy. Uh, release date on this one is TBA, which I believe is the 13th month of the year. Let's see, Swordhaven, uh, inspired by the Infinity Engine titles. Okay, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale. <laughs> yes, those are great inspirations, are they not? As well as other classics. Now, what's cool about this is they say that the battle, yeah, will be turn-based combat or hasten the pace with real time with pause. I suggest they're going. Was it? Is that game Dead Fire? Is that the name of that uh, second Pillars game? <laughs> is it, or is it the Pathfinder games? Man, I'm just like my memory is just going, but. Uh, I seem to remember they had this system as well, where you could switch back and forth from real time, or from turn based to real time with pause. Uh, so I think that's a really, you know, if they can get that worked out, you know, that's that's really cool because you don't always want to do the real slow uh, turn based thing uh, if it's just a minor scuff, <laughs> scuffling. <laughs> uh, it's nice to be able to switch on the uh, real time with pause in those cases, just sit back and uh, you know watch the action. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, they're talking about a classless role-playing system. Each stat combination requiring uh, provides a unique game experience, distinctive dialogues, and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know how I feel about that. 
you know, I know some people get all tied up about classes. I don't want classes. <laughs> What's wrong with class? it's, a, it's a warrior. It's a rogue. It's a wizard. You know, I don't necessarily need every game to have a, a fighting, you know, a wizard with the armor and a sword and a, a rogue running around with a you know, two-handed battle axe. <laughs> you know, I'm okay with the classes myself, but apparently drives some people insane. Uh, so I guess we'll see what they're able to achieve here. I always keep an open mind. I always like to see what people are experimenting with because you never really know what's going to, you know, strike a chord. It could be something that maybe it doesn't sound so great, but you play it and it's like, <laughs> actually, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, so we'll see how that goes. And you also, uh, Miko, that is, wrote in about Jason Schreier's new book, uh, Play Nice, The Rise, Fall, and Future of Blizzard Entertainment. <laughs> Uh, the 33-year history of one of gaming's most fascinating companies. It'll be out on October 8th, 30 bucks. Uh, so this has, uh, he interviewed over 300 current and former employees. So that's just staggering amount of interviews. <laughs> I mean, that's truly incredible. Uh, so I'm really curious about this book. It says it's full of colorful personalities and dramatic twists. Go away. Uh, dramatic twist. Play Nice is the social network for the is the social network documentary, I guess, for the video games industry. So I'm certainly intrigued by this. Sounds like Jason Schreier would be somebody would be great to have on on the show. Probably be promoting this book. Maybe I can uh, hook him with that lure. <laughs> it's a chance to promote your book, but really it's a chance to talk about 33 years of Blizzard. You know, I've really had a hard time myself. Uh, getting anybody on my show to talk about Blizzard. I don't think I've ever had anybody uh, that I can think of. I hope I'm not forgetting something, somebody obvious here. Uh, but I've always wanted somebody on that could tell me a little bit about, you know, some of their big games and you know, what it was like behind the scenes. But it seems to be a fairly tight-knit group. You know, so Schreier's work might actually be really helpful in the shining some light you know, on some of these uh, aspects of the uh, game industry's history. All right, and then finally, Punny writes in about Guild Saga Vanquished World. It's a really fun look to this game. Uh, release date will be April 15th, 2024. As a newcomer to the Heroes Guild, you're inexplicably chosen for a mission of grave importance. <laughs> Much to the chagrin of your seniors. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like just about every JRPG ever? So you unravel the mystery as you make your way towards the Undar, or Andra, 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 an uncharted continent in the West brimming with danger and opportunity. All right, so it's got tactical turn-based battle system reminiscent of many old-school RPG classics. Uh, assemble your hall and hone your party. Now, what I thought was interesting, yeah, here's a couple things. Uh, they apparently have a hundred, over a hundred skills spread across ten different schools uh, to learn. So that's really nice. Sounds like some really good uh, character dynamics there. Increase attributes to grow stronger, unlike dialogue options, or gain exploration boosts. Sift through thousands of items, each with their own flavor text to find the perfect fit. You know, so it all sounds really great. You know, I like games with lots and lots of stuff to get in there and play around with, and it sounds like this game might deliver. Uh, plus, I really like the look of this. It looks kind of interesting. Uh, a little something different. All right. Uh, so I had the, the coffee earlier, uh, that Irish cream or <laughs> Irish whiskey coffee. Uh, which is pretty good, but I thought, you know, I do happen to have a hopped kombucha good to go, ready to go here. I thought I might as well try that out as well. You know, it's a very plain bottle. <laughs> and there's actually nothing on this bottle, but the, you know, some people put their kombucha in glass. Uh, but I like the plastic because when it's ready, uh, it'll be really tough to push. It'll be, you know, it'll feel tight. You know, same when you know it's got some uh, carbonation built up. You know, with a glass bottle, yeah, if it breaks, okay, that was too much. Uh, but how do you know if it's just right? You know, just kind of have to wing it uh, from experience. But this is a, you know, gives you some indication. Uh, now, I, what I did with this, I just made kombucha the regular traditional way. And then I basically made a hopped uh, concentration. <laughs> just put a bunch of hops and boiled the water and boiled it down and down and down uh, until I had a, a fairly pungent uh, liquid. And then I poured a little bit in each bottle and I bottled it up. So I'm not sure this method will produce anything uh, delightful, but what the heck, I guess you'll be the, uh, the first to see. Uh, but anyway, it's been in the probably several, at least a couple of months. 
uh, trying to carbonate up mostly outside the fridge and then when it got started to feeling like it was going to explode <laughs> uh, i put it in the fridge for a couple of a couple more weeks so this has had a lot of time hopefully to carbonate but you know haven't had much luck you know, with kombucha you know it's always the same story with these i get one batch uh, that's really good uh, but then all the other batches are kind of lousy you know so i don't know what the secret is but let's go ahead and open it so i would expect more um more fizz opening that so i'm a little bit concerned <laughs> hopefully we get some uh, fizz on this you know it's really hard for some reason to get this stuff carbonated properly you know we definitely got some bubbles there again i have to say you know <laughs> not much in the way of carbonation considering how long this thing had to carbonate uh, but maybe it'll make it up in terms of flavor uh, it smells very very lemony you know, i'm not sure where that strong uh, citrus aroma is coming from i did use uh, citrus hops yeah i think it was citrus hops and that would make sense but anyway very lemony limey <laughs> <laughs> it smells like uh, kind of like vinegary lemon uh, so not the most uh, aromatic quality but we'll give it a taste <clears throat> very tart <laughs> kind of makes you want to pucker it's a very tart uh, flavor to this i uh, wouldn't have expected that i was expecting kind of a citrusy maybe sour taste uh, but instead it's just really uh, super tart it doesn't really smell all that great. <laughs> you know, I don't smell any hops in this at all. You know, so I, I feel like I need to at least double, if not triple, uh, the hop flavor if, I'm, if I ever do this again. It's got a good mouthfeel. It's a, it just, <laughs> you know, just the, I can't get over how tart this is. It's got a nice kind of creamy uh, consistency to it. It's, it's a little on the sweet side for my taste. You know, I like a little more bite, a little bit less uh, sugar. But, uh, you know, I don't know if I'd pay money for this. <laughs> but it's just kind of fun to, you know, play around with. You know, I, I made some hop kombucha one time, and it was just so good. You know, it tasted like a really good uh, microbrew. You know, like a, it was like a good IPA. You know, I didn't even know it was kombucha. But I'll be damned if I can replicate that. <laughs> I've tried again and again to come up with something that would taste as good as that first batch. But I don't know if it was just unique or there was just something, you know, some, some sort of act of God. <laughs> you know, what was it? Uh, but I've never been able to make a, a decent batch of a hopped kombucha again. So anyway, I'm going to keep experimenting. You know, I wouldn't want any of you... Uh, <laughs> wouldn't make anybody else suffer with this <laughs> you know it's not that it's terrible oh i guess it kind of tastes like a you know it kind of tastes like a lemony a lemon uh, uh what would be something tart <laughs> i can't think of exactly what that tastes like but it's kind of like a soda uh with like those you know those little candies that you got those little cheap uh was it little little circles, <laughs> smart ads or something like the smarties? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It's like these little chalky, sort of sour candies. Uh, that's what that tastes like <laughs> in, in liquid form. <laughs> so, you know, if you like that, you know, maybe I'll send you a bottle. But, uh, but yeah, I'm not going to rate this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than to say it was fun to make and who cares it's not gonna cost any money to make this you know i might keep uh experimenting let's see if i can i think i probably need to radically change the system at this point <laughs> uh, but anyway let's wrap up with a quotation uh, so i was looking for quotes about war and i came across this one by george s Patton. it was something like this it is foolish and wrong to mourn the men who died Rather, we should thank God that such men lived. So ponder on that, and see you guys next time.
dinner? Did you say dinner? Like just the two of us in the same town on the same day in the same restaurant, possibly at the same table?